56 degrees, clear skies, lights are on, and everybody's home in College Station, Texas. School record 14th consecutive sellout for the ninth-ranked Aggies. 82,000 will fill Kyle Field tonight. A couple old Big 12 pals get together to close out the regular season here in the SEC. And here's the story. It will be Alabama-Georgia in the title game. The winner likely to the BCS championship game. So for the Aggies tonight, this is about bowl positioning. For the Tigers, this is about playing in any bowl of any kind. And we've already set an Aggie record this season. A minute in, haven't mentioned Johnny Manziel once. With Ed Cunningham, I'm Steve Levy. Hi, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you continue to enjoy all the college football. And a special hello to the 869 Heisman voters. You make 870. And you can make the argument the Heisman Trophy will be decided tonight. It's unbelievable that at the end of the regular season for USC, Notre Dame, and Texas A&M fall on the same Saturday, of course, because those teams are not playing next Saturday in their conference championships or a regular season game. So as a voter, I want to see Johnny Manziel. We've seen the highlights, and there have been very, very many highlights this year for Johnny Manziel. Earlier in the year, people were just trying to figure out, is this guy just a great athlete playing quarterback? But he got better in the pocket, better throwing the ball down the field, using a lot of the weapons, but let's not kid ourselves. The reason Johnny Manziel will be in New York for the Heisman is because of his athleticism, and that was really on display against Alabama. You want a Heisman moment? That's it right there. But I think a lot of the uh, credit needs to go to Kevin Sumlin. The first-year coach came in from Houston, didn't really know what he had here in Johnny Manziel, and after they got out of spring football, they told Manziel, you have to stop turning the ball over. You're a great athlete. You have to get better. Manziel went to work, so give a lot of credit to Sumlin in his first year for taking a great athlete and making him a great quarterback. As for Missouri, keep in mind, they need a win to become bowl eligible. They have played in a school record seven consecutive bowls, looking to make it eight. And they have been injury plagued all season long. Mizzou has won the toss. They will defer. So Texas A&M will receive. Andrew Baggett will kick it away for the Tigers. Trey Williams is back deep for A&M. There's Williams who has explosive speed for a youngster. And on senior night, 16 senior Aggies will play in their final game at Kyle Field. And looking for a special evening tonight. Williams fumbled the kickoff. It is picked up at the five-yard line and brought out just across the 15. And we'll get our first look and first mention of Johnny Football. <laughs> Ding, there it yeah, is. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, mark how many times the nicknames are uh, is said tonight, but it is fitting. This is a young man who... He, from the first game, remember they had their first game postponed against Louisiana Tech, so his first game was on the road at Florida. Texas A&M at that point wasn't sure how they were going to compete in the SEC, and it was after that game that this team and this quarterback realized, hey, we belong in this league. Not only do we belong, but we can excel, and they sure have in this first season. All eyes could say all eyes of the nation. At least for the next hour plus, will be on number two in the maroon. Johnny Manziel, but he ends up there. Kristen Michael, and Michael breaks it out across the 35. They rip up a huge chunk on the first play for scrimmage. One of the strengths of this team coming in as AM goes very fast is that offensive line. That was a huge hole. 21-yard gain there. And again, they'll go on the ground. Inside handoff, not nearly as much room for Michael that time. He's stopped by Sheldon Richardson, who better be doing most of the stopping for Missouri tonight. Sheldon Richardson, a young man who was suspended last week against Syracuse. Sources said it was an academic issue, and then he refused to do his punishment for missing either a class or a study hall, and they could get no pressure up front on defense against Syracuse and were torn apart in the pass game because of that. Second down and nine upcoming. Aggies have been brilliant on their opening drive all season long. Little screen off to Michael that time, and he's out to midfield. Braylon Webb able to make the stop. 
Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Ryan Swope at that inside receiver so important. Demontre Moore goes to defensive end full time. They ran a 3-4 defense here last year. He went between offensive uh, outside linebacker, defensive end. Now he's just been a terror at end. 12 yards on the last play. Here's Manziel's first rush of the night. And making some people miss and turning the corner there. And he's knocked out by E.J. Gaines at the 42-yard line. You know, Gary Pinkle, the head coach of Missouri, who's been coaching quarterbacks for a very long time, that's what his background was. He said, when you watch the film of Manziel, what's really stands out is he doesn't look as fast as he is. And, and you see that play there. It, it, he has a running motion that it doesn't look like he's gaining as much yardage as he is, but he sure is. Five wide receivers, as you'd expect. Manziel will throw, it, and it's there, and it's caught. Down to the five-yard line. Kenrick McNeil. And AM is off to a brilliant start. They've scored first in every game this season, and they're on their way. Kenrick McNeil makes a wonderful adjustment on this ball. This ball slightly underthrown, which you want to throw. This ball a little underneath, but you could see the safety had started to come over. And folks, as you can see already, <laughs> this is not going to be one of those, I'll be in the kitchen and watch the replay. There will not be a whole lot of instant replay. These are two teams that play fast. And that is the new way to play it in college football. At every conference you go to, the number of plays per game are going, they're trending up. 70, 80, 85, getting into 90 plays per game. Three tight ends set here for the Aggies. On second down and goal from the one. Off the play action, Manziel had a man. It was in and out of the hands of Nehemiah Hicks. Andrew Wilson got good pressure on Manziel. And that's obviously something they want to do is hit the quarterback. And it was started with really good coverage. They were looking for Azuma. Watch a coup over on the fade, and the corner absolutely jammed him up. And Manziel had to come off of that read. Usually that's a one-step throw it, but it was good coverage. Eighth play of this drive. On the option, Manziel will give it up for the easy touchdown. Kristen Michael, his 11th touchdown of the season, fitting the senior scores first here in Kyle Field tonight. Well, we'll take a look at the blimp shot here, but what a wonderful block out on the edge by the tight end, Nehemiah Hicks. He releases the outside man as the option, and then he picks up the next man inside and drives him to the outside. Nice job by Hicks clearing the way. Taylor Bertolette will come on for the extra point. Field goal is a bit, a bit of an adventure, but pretty safe on extra points. There's a flag. You got the business end of that. The touchdown is good, and it will count. A&M has scored first in every game, 17 straight dating back to last season, and they've scored on 10 of 12 opening drives this season, putting the opposition in an early hole. Burlett kicks it through already. It's 7-0 A&M. We send it back to the studio for the first time in our game to Wendy Nix. Steve, thank you. Florida, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, fourth and one at the four. Ten seconds to play, and there goes Blake Bell to tie it up in regulation. 45 all on ESPN. And Florida, Florida State on ABC. Steve? All right, Wendy, thank you. That scoring drive, eight plays, 83 yards. Take just two minutes, 13 seconds <laughs> off the clock and might want to get used to that. They move very quickly. And it's so hard when you're trying to defend such a dynamic player like Manziel. And you get a guy like Kristen Michael, who's been in and out of the lineup, was suspended for violating team rules earlier this year. Still coming back from a severe knee injury last year, looking like he's hitting full stride at the end. So now you've got the power running game and the quarterback, and oh, by the way, they're going to run a play about every 15 seconds. Now, this is where Missouri will have to be successful to stay in the game as the return game. Marcus Murphy is among the more talented in the nation at his position. And because of the penalty, the 15-yard personal foul, and him kicking off from the 50. And a lot of times what they do is you bloop this up and hope to get him pinned inside the 10 instead of kicking through the end zone. Let's see what Taylor Bertolette does with it. Kicks it deep and out of the end zone. 
third member of our broadcast team has information on there's another quarterback in the game tonight. Here's Kaylee Hartung. There sure is, Steve. Missouri has been tight-lipped about their quarterback situ situation all week long. James Franklin sustained a concussion last week in that loss to Syracuse. Well, Corbin Burkstresser, the redshirt freshman, he will get his fourth start of the season right here. Franklin was having sensitivity to light and noise throughout the week, and in this environment, it was not safe to put him on the field, Steve. All right, Kaylee, thank you. I don't know why they think light and noise would bother him <laughs> in this building. Right, sure. So Burke Stresser, as if there isn't enough stress at that position at any level, he's got to have it on the back of his jersey as well. Kendall Lawrence is the star tailback for Missouri. And trying to get something going there, Spencer Neal able to bring him down quickly. Been such a difficult year for Missouri so far with injuries. And say so far, they have to win today to go beyond here. But a lot of it with James Franklin, he's had a shoulder injury, now the concussion. He missed spring ball. Remember, he had to have surgery on that throwing arm and missed spring ball. So it has been a very difficult year for Missouri. And they've lost three starting offensive linemen along the way as well. Loss of two on that last play. Brings up a second and 12. Fake the inside handoff. Brooks Dresser will keep it himself and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Spencer Neely there to bring him down along with Sean Porter, who will play a key role in the defense tonight. And here you are, way behind the chains. You've got a, a redshirt freshman quarterback who's had some struggles this uh, year, even though last week against uh, Syracuse, he played very well in the fourth quarter. Drove Missouri on two scoring drives, but the defense just couldn't hold up the win. But you get behind the sticks in a place like this, it gets hard. Third down and 10. And they get loud here at Kyle Field. Good protection this time, and the pass is complete for a first down. Just what the doctor ordered for the Tigers. It's John McGaffey for the play. Well, the one thing that Burke Dresser has is a very strong arm. And this guy went through all of spring drills as the first string quarterback because James Franklin was injured. But when he gets some time and can step into it, he can really put some heat on it. That was a good fastball. Missouri will spread it out here. Go five receivers out of the gun. Burks dresser, quick throw, and a little low intended for LaDamian Washington. Went off his fingertips. We'll take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A on the other side. Well, a guy that uh, has really had to pick up the load is Kendall Lawrence, breaking, uh, closing in on 1,000 yards, has been the workhorse with uh, Josie out for the season. T.J. Moe, a guy who plays that slot and may have to play some quarterback because there's only a true freshman behind Burke's dresser. Moe would be the third-string quarterback if they had to ride out this game. Burke's dresser has thrown for three touchdowns, but he's been picked off six times this season. Not the touchdown interception ratio you're looking for. Again, has good protection. Now on the move, a scramble and throw, and the ball's incomplete. Well, talking to Gary Pinkle, you asked him on the conference call, you know, sort of an introductory, how you doing? And, <laughs> and right away, it was a challenging year. It was downhill from there. It's so difficult going into the SEC for both of these schools, but to have to go into the SEC for Gary Pinkle and his staff and lose three starting offensive linemen. Henry Josie, your best back, is not healthy after being injured last year. And then your quarterback in and out of the lineup. It's just so difficult to tell what this team would have been like with all those guys. Low snap. Burke Stresser picks it up. Has some running room for a second. But that gap was closed quickly by Jonathan Stewart. Well, this is all about bringing pressure. And you can see all of the bodies moving around and coming right from the uh, lined up to the outside is Jonathan Stewart, and he comes back to the inside. And for an offensive line that has not worked together a bunch, it's difficult sometimes to pick up those twists and stunts. Trey Barrow is standing in his 20 to punt it away. On the receiving end is Dustin Harris. Let's it bounce and takes a big time Missouri bounce. And it'll go out of bounds at the 13 yard line. And when we come back, we'll get our second look. Johnny Football. That's our second mention ding, ding. for scoring at home. 
five minutes in opening quarter already seven nothing in favor of the ninth ranked Aggies of Texas A&M they're going to a bowl game we just don't know which bowl of course Missouri trying to get bowl eligible and Texas A&M you want to talk about putting the pressure on your opponent score first every game touchdown on an opening drive nine straight games and you hear so much about offenses starting slow because they've got to get a feel for the defense and yeah that's not quite the case. Here's Manziel, second opportunity from deep in his own territory. Off the play action, he swings it out to Ben Molina, his first action of the game. And it's taken down for a loss by Braylon Webb. And Molina, a guy who burst on the scene at the end of last season when uh, Michael and Cyrus Gray both went down with injuries. And He's been a guy from the very start. Kevin Sumlin has said it, it, it's no mistake we're going to play Molina a lot. Everyone thinking Michael would get a lot more run. But guys earned it. Second and 14, able to connect out to the 20-yard line. Daryl Walker on the receiving end. Back to Wendy. Steve, thank you. When last we left to Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, we're headed to overtime. The Cowboys kicked the field goal, make it 48-45. But the Sooners answered with this Quinn Sharp 18-yard TD run to win it. The final, Oklahoma 51, Oklahoma State 48. A lot of overtime in the air in college football today. What a, what a day and what a night around the nation in college football. And we hope you enjoy watching. He had to be a Heisman favorite right now. He's got the football. Johnny Manziel and on the run, able to throw and complete to Mike Evans. And they get the lost yardage back to get a first down. The one thing that Manziel does, as well as anybody I've seen in a long time, is when he is on the move, throw with accuracy. It makes it so difficult when a guy is this athletic and can still make the difficult throws. We showed it in the open there, some of the throws, especially the one against Alabama. He just has the ability to go while he's running around and get his shoulders turned and make a very accurate throw. That was Ben Molina for six. Xavier Gooden brought him down. They fake the handoff. Manziel will keep it on the ground and not even out to the 40-yard line. Andrew Wilson made the tackle. Andrew Wilson did a really nice job that time because one thing that they have added to this Texas Tech spread offense that Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury brought with him from Houston and Mike Sumlin is added those design quarterback runs to pulling line to pulling linemen and Wilson gets around both of them third and short now Manziel blocking signals a 54 percent conversion rate on third down which is brilliant and they get the first down there again it's Mike Evans Evans, a wonderful target, did not start playing high school football until his junior year, was more of a basketball player. But this was a run play that the quarterback is allowed to read the coverage over to Evans, and if it's off coverage, just take a good read by the quarterback. Already three for three on third down conversion rates, which was already number two in the country coming in. They get it out, out to midfield. Ben Molina carried the ball. Jimmy Burge made the start. They made the uh, tackle, I beg your pardon. Got his first start of the season, Burge did last week against Syracuse. Burge from Texas. Seems like everybody on the Missouri team is from Texas. And those numbers probably only go up. Recruiting in the SEC. Again, it's Manziel inside Tiger territory. First reception from Ryan Swope. And they, uh, Texas A&M right now, taking advantage of Missouri playing off a little bit. Let's see if Missouri starts to come up and press. They're not doing it now, they're off six yards. Manziel straight drop, completed the pass, but Malcolm Kennedy was rocked after he received it. E.J. Gaines got him again. And Gaines very lucky he is not called for targeting on this play. As he goes straight helmet to helmet and it was, it was on the edge of launching, but you usually see that call. Quarterback draw, Manziel will take off and duck his head down to the 30-yard line. It's that little stutter step he has that just freezes people right there. Just freezes Wilson completely, and then Wilson has to dive at his legs. He's so athletic. 
breakneck speed, and that time Manziel on the run is passed just behind Malcolm Kennedy. A rare incompletion, so Manziel 8 of 10 on the evening so far. Well, I guess, uh, I guess he can be inaccurate sometimes on the run. Of course, this time, as he's changing direction, two guys about to hit him, he tries to sling it back across his body. So we'll, we'll cut him some slack on that one. Incompletion gets everybody a breather on the field. And Manziel will hang on to it there. Takes a pretty good shot down about the 28-yard line. Sheldon Richardson in the stop there. And this is where a guy like Manziel is so difficult to defend because you're in a down and distance where you think it's a drop back pass and he's got a good enough arm and is accurate enough to both be an athletic quarterback out on the edge but also in this down and distance just sit in the pocket and pick it apart if you don't get to it. Third and eight, spread everybody out. He's got three to his left, two to his right. Those Johnny Manziel. Flushed out of the pocket to his left and across his body wide open. And I do mean wide open and still on his feet is Malcolm Kennedy down to the three-yard line. Well, one thing that the coaches had to work on really hard early in the season was the receivers finding open spots. Because Manziel is so exciting and typically takes off, some of the receivers would stop running or go block. <laughs> And what Cliff Kingsbury and his staff have done a wonderful job of is teaching these receivers how to get open when things fall apart. And you were right. There was no, there wasn't a Tiger within 10 yards of the receiver. You can understand if some of those teammates even, besides the defense, get caught watching Manziel and everything he's doing. Well, roll to his right this time, and, and now to his left, of course. And stop and throw back to the end zone and was throwing that one away. Here's the other thing that, as much as Manziel runs around, that happens to the defense. The big people up front get real tuckered. I mean, they're running in a bunch of different defensive linemen right now. Dave Steckel, the defensive coordinator, just he, he could see his defensive line. You just, it's over. If, if you have to chase a guy like that three, four, five consecutive plays, you're going to burn all your energy. Second effort, did he get there? There's the signal, touchdown, Ben Molina. Ah, oh, the touchdown from two yards away. And they're an extra point away from making it 14-0 Texas A&M. Start of the year, everybody talked about the biggest strength of this team was its offensive line. And they did okay that time, but I think you give Molina the credit there. He finished that, looked like it might be a tackle for loss, but he ends up getting six. Look at these drives, 15 plays, 87 yards. Man, they started on their 13. I did the math for you and took less than five minutes off the clock. Proud of the snap, false start. Offense, number 51, five-yard penalty, retry. Well, that'll give Kevin Sumlin something to uh, correct, at least. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Grab your friends, bring your IDs. If you're 21 or over, it's Miller time. And in part by Cheez It, because at Cheez It, real cheese matters. I mean it really. How many more turkey sandwiches could you eat? I mean, everybody has to be done with the turkey sandwich left over by now and ready to enjoy a Heisman Trophy kind of main course here tonight. Johnny Manziel has broke numerous records already. And look out. Look out, Cam Newton. He's 41 yards away from taking over that top spot away. And those other two guys fared pretty well. Yeah, they did okay. And both, of course, the Heisman Trophy winners in their time. And I think, you know, this idea that freshmen can't win the Heisman, I think that's dead. 
They say the sophomores could win until yeah. Tebow did. Yeah, I think I think it's dead. Just vote for the best player in the country. Taylor Burlett will kick it away from the 35. Marcus Murphy looking for a little offensive spark from the Tigers. Picks it up at the 10. Cuts to midfield. Stays on his feet. And he'll be dropped at the 17-yard line. And that's where they'll take over. We send it back to Wendy Nix. Steve, thank you very much. We hope to Death Valley Clemson and cross-state rival South Carolina Taj Boyd here. The touchdown puts Clemson up 7-0 in our Taco Bell studio update. And coming up right on ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern, the game everybody's waiting for. Mark Eastley and USC getting set for number one Notre Dame, 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Steve? All right, Wendy, thanks. Ed, Taj Boyd, do anything for you? Uh, he's on my list. I'm going to look at about six guys the day I vote. I always break out my board, and he'll be on there. And drop. Wow, speaking of that drop, Spencer Neely, who came in with four tackles for losses this season, the big drop there, along with Julian Obiaha. And Neely, one of the 16 seniors lined up over the center, has been active all day. For whatever reason, 99 has been, he's looked almost unblockable early in this game. I know he's playing well, but Missouri's not getting many hats on him. Loss of three, so Brooks Dresser has to throw. And he's able to complete. And he got a good look at Jimmy Hunt looking around and just seeing the maroon jerseys coming at him. Hunt's a guy just a sophomore as you kind of spin forward to next season for Missouri. Not that this season is over, still in the hunt for a bowl game, but he's one of the many young, explosive players that Missouri will return on offense as hard as it was for them this year. And when you get James Franklin back, and uh, some of that youth on the offensive line gets broken off. I think this will be pretty explosive offense next season. Good ratio for Hunt, just nine catches, but three of them have gone for touchdowns. And LaDamian to Washington. They keep trying to go to that side. The pass may be a little low, but Washington hasn't been able to come up and make a play and, for his quarterback. And they and then Missouri had exactly what they wanted. David Yost, the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. Call it, it they had what they wanted. Burke Strasser just did not get the ball there accurately enough to be caught so unfortunately for Missouri here they are punting again to AM, which has looked unstoppable so far on offense Tigers would a, a first down would be a victory yeah. helpful yeah. here's Trey Barrow to punt it away again might want to get used to that let wear out Dustin Harris on the return fair catch signal for the 36 yard line Johnny Manziel will retake the field and they'll do so with AM. I'm in a 14 nothing lead when we come back Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. The nation awaits Johnny Manziel's first public statement. Will it be with Kaylee after the game? You'll have to stick around. Definitely Monday, we're told. For now, he's letting his play do the talking. It's really fascinating when you watch how well he moves. It's the little moves like this right here where the linebacker Wilson thinks I've got him and then it just like that side hop. But the one thing you hear coaches talk about oh don't throw back across your body back across the grain. But when you have a guy who can do it this quickly Manziel turns his shoulders and the ball's gone so quickly the defense can't really react. And also it's thrown with enough velocity and accuracy that they're not going to get there either. It's so difficult to defend if you can throw that. They start with very good field position off the play action. Manziel able to complete right on the target. To Mike Evans. And interesting in talking about Manziel not talking, Coach Sumlin has said nobody's asked to talk to Mike Evans. What's the, what's <laughs> yeah. the fuss? What's the big deal? Well, and it's a rule that Sumlin has had going back to his Houston days. The freshman don't talk to the media. Manziel will take off, finds some running room, tries to make one of those patented moves. Oh boy, he grabbed his knee. Don't that, go anywhere. Yeah, EJ was... Gaines got him. E.J. Gaines was holding on to Manziel's left leg as Manziel went to try to get more yardage. And right when he tried to pull his left leg out from the grip of Gaines, he immediately winced and went down. As you can hear, the stadium has gone silent.
Johnny Manziel the Heisman hopeful and the Heisman favorite in many minds to this point lays down on the field and in what, a prone position and what they're doing right now is a stress test on his knee you can see they're moving the knee to see if there's any ligament damage standing ovation for the favorite son and this is one thing with young quarterbacks because they think they can do Oh, you could see it. Yeah, it turned right to the inside. Watch as Gaines goes down, and he's pulling on that leg right there. Gaines' weight went against to, towards the inside of the joint. It went against the joint to the inside, and it was that little extra effort with Gaines holding on to that left ankle that caused the stress. Nothing that happens on the field tonight will top what you just saw. Jameel Showers checks in at quarterback now for AM. And on the first play, it's Kristen Michael breaking away for the touchdown. Second touchdown of the game for Michael. That goes for 38 yards. Of course, the excitement of that touchdown and the potential of a 21-point lead is tempered by what's going on with Johnny Manziel on the sideline. What a start for Kristen Michael, the senior. Four carries, 60 yards, and two touchdowns. Extra point is through, and it's 21 to nothing, Aggies. And so now I think the question becomes as it's starting to look a little easy for AM, no matter who's at quarterback, when you can run it like that. You don't have to have Johnny Manziel as your quarterback because that starts to get easy. But I think the question becomes now for Kevin Sumlin, if there is any chance that this young man could injure that knee further, we don't know what the injury is now, would he risk playing him? And it's such a tough place to be in. The young man is right in the thick of the Heisman race. So if there's not going to be a further injury, maybe you let him come back in. But by the looks of his teammates patting him there on his head, it looks to me like Manziel's day may be over. Luke Jokel right there. That Pat tells me that number two's day is done. Right. That's from my experience yep. seeing how guys are treated on the sideline when they've been pulled. What a and what a tough break for a young man who's played so sensationally. And, and it, you have to put into context. They moved conferences. Everyone said, can they compete at this level? Can they compete against the SEC? And the answer was not only yes, but they can excel. And a lot of it had to do with this young man, just a shame, but he may, may, may be done for the night. 21-0 Aggies. And yet it feels very different than the home team having a 21-0 lead. Marcus Murphy from the goal line will run it out. And cut it up inside. Down to about the 17-yard line. Kaylee Hartung is down on the field. You know Kaylee is working very hard to get the latest uh, what's going on with Johnny Manziel? We'll get that to you as soon as we can. Aerial coverage being provided by the MetLife Blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. <laughs> At 21 nothing, And Missouri will take over. The 18 yard line. They've had no field position and very little offense. They got their own backup quarterback in the game. Hand off out to about the 21. Marcus Murphy got the carry there and down to Kaylee. Steve, Texas A&M has a policy to not release any injury information, but I just heard the trainer call over to Johnny and ask, where is your knee brace? Johnny told him it was in the bottom of his locker. The trainer then radioed into the locker room to have someone run it out to him. He's now stretching and extending his knee. And as his teammates pat him on the back, he's saying, man, I'm good. I'm good. Steve. All right, Kelly, thank you. Got some pressure from the backside this time, and Missouri smartly goes the other way. 
And they'll pick up four on the play as Bergstress are able to pitch it out. Obviously, if they're going to get a knee brace for the young man, he's going to put it on and see if he can move a little bit. So good news for Texas A&M. And but it, we should mention that he did get up and walk off the field. Didn't seem to be in a huge amount of pain. The only way you would set, sit him if you knew there was structural damage or more could be done. Maybe Manziel will be coming back in once they get that knee brace out. Third down and five. Brooks Stress has three targets to his left, so he looks right, and they have a completion for a rare first down. Able to hit LaDamian Washington for the first time tonight. And they'll move the chains after the gain of 10. Well, if you're just joining us, Johnny Manziel, the last time he ran the ball, was being tackled. And as he went to fight out of the grasp of EJ Gaines, watched the left knee flex right there towards the MCL, that inside medial collateral ligament. He's been tested. They're checking to see if he can put a brace on. We may see him back in the game. Trying to squirm away for some extra yardage. Here Burkstrasser, and that is going to go as an incomplete. Looked like they had it. Burkstrasser to Doriel Green Beckham. And Stephen Terrell able to knock it away. Kaylee. Steve, Johnny just hopped off of the bench and very easily walked down the stairs uh, to a training room down below the stands. Uh, minutes later, a, a trainer brought out the knee brace. They're going to try to fit it to him now. We'll, I'll let you know what we see as soon as he comes back out. All right, Kaylee Hartung down. Working the sidelines tonight here on ESPN2. Hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend. Plenty of great college football continuing. Even after our game tonight. Speaking of which, Back to Bristol, when you next. Steve, thank you very much. A check on Stanford and UCLA. A Stanford win, and there'll be a rematch next week in the Pac-12 championship game. That's Stefan Taylor on the carry. 49 yards. The Cardinal leading UCLA 21-7. Steve? So we throw back to Wendy for other action. Can you imagine the cut-ins all over the country that Johnny Manziel has been injured here tonight as we await word? Third down and nine for Corbin Burkstresser. Ball spotted at the 34. A roll to his right. And now throw, and it's knocked away. Would have been good enough for the first down, but good coverage on the play. The Shazer Everett was there to knock it away. Everett, of course, the hero of the Alabama game when he had that interception on fourth down against A.J. McCarron. And uh, this, that side of the field just started to shrink for Burkstresser. He couldn't quite fit it in. Trey Barrow, he's going to be worn out after this one. Standing at his 20, Dustin Harris. On the receiving end, started at the 25, he'll back up all the way. Wow, what a punt. All the way to the 11, and he is dropped immediately. And a good special teams play. Andrew Wilson able to make the tackle. There is a flag on the play. We'll sort to see what the penalty is. A 53-yard punt by Trey Barrow. BCS Countdown is on ESPN and ESPNU tomorrow. The latest BCS standings will be revealed. Plus, look ahead at some of the key upcoming matchups. BCS Countdown, Sunday, 8.30 on ESPN, then at 9 on ESPNU, presented by Allstate. Imagine if Notre Dame loses to USC. That's going to be an interesting show tomorrow night. And that pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage by who else but Sheldon Richardson. All right, be honest with me. Are you looking, not that you root, would you like to see Notre Dame lose and create a whole lot of chaos for everybody? That <laughs> well, makes it fun. It is our business, right? right. To have people talking do. about it. Yeah, and of course, we have two years left of the BCS, so why not pour a bunch of gasoline on it on the way out? <laughs> I mean, that would just blow everything yeah. up, right? Off the knockdown pass here, second and 10, and showers. Able to get it out to Kenrick McNeil for a gain of five, and it'll bring up a, a third down and five. Well, and, and there's a crazy situation, as it looks like. Uh, boy, that'd be a big, a big, another big loss for A&M offensively if they lost Kendrick McNeil. He's had a nice end to his senior season. Showers puts him in, and he got the ball, and it is caught for the first down. 
Mike Evans on the receiving end. And that'll wind up being the last play, I believe, of the first quarter. Yeah, but I think that they I think they've missed an illegal touching play here. Even though, even though the receiver Evans was pushed out of bounds, I, I, I'm shocked they're not reviewing this. Because it looked to me like Evans did not establish himself back in the field of play before the catch. Yeah, they're gonna kill it. Yeah. That play it looks like will not count. Right. So in college football, if you get forced out of bounds, you can come back in and be the first to touch it. Prior to the ball being snapped, the pagers went off, so therefore the previous play is under further review. And there's Evans. He was forced out of bounds. Let's see if his left foot comes into, into play. Now, yeah, he did not establish himself back in. So this will be a penalty against A&M, wipe out this play, and they'll actually be backed up. But the good news for Texas A&M is Johnny Manziel's putting his helmet back on. So all of that body language that I was reading where guys were yep. tapping, I think it was just shock that they were uh, potentially going to lose a guy of this stature, but went and got his knee brace on and looks like he's going back in the game. So clearly Evans did not establish, meaning Evans has to come back and put one foot, at least one foot, back in the field of play. He never does this, so this is going to be a penalty against Texas A&M. Seven different receivers for A&M have catches on the evening. And give E.J. Gaines credit there. That was really nice coverage. Gaines, the two corners for Missouri, Kip Edwards, E.J. Gaines, have had nice seasons. Gaines, that time, very good coverage, knocking, again, completely legal. You can make contact, but knocking Evans out of bounds. Gaines is going to be a household name, by the way, at the end of the <laughs> yeah. night for knocking Manziel out of the game. Gaines did nothing wrong, by no. the way, on the play. But a whole lot of people be aware of the junior from Independence, Missouri. <laughs> so ruled a completion and a first down. And we still await the word from up top. Left foot was out of bounds when he left, caught it in the air, landed back in bounds. So, indisputable video evidence that the receiver did not. After further it. review, the rolling on the field stands. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's the end of the first quarter. Well, I'll have to ask for clarification on that, but my understanding of this rule is that play should have been overturned. That is the end of the first quarter. Johnny Manziel's got the chin strap on tight. We anticipate a return to the field after that play. We'll be right back. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. It is all Texas A&M, 21-0 over Missouri. And we're still trying to figure out that last play in the first quarter. Well, the, the clock ran out, but for some reason, they didn't let the play go. And so they're going to go back out, and they have three seconds. They'll wind the clock. Not sure if they'll even get a playoff here. Uh, Gary Pinkle's still trying to get an explanation the from stadium, the officials. The stadium scoreboard has 15 minutes left and quarter number two. But we're being told they still have three seconds left. In that first quarter. And Johnny Manziel. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to three seconds. There were three seconds on the clock when the ball was snapped. Therefore, it was not the end of the first quarter. There will be three seconds on the clock, and the clock will start on the ready. A good, a good uh, correction there because there was those three seconds left, and the play didn't go because they got buzzed from upstairs right. in the replay booth, so the play never happened. So actually the right way to do this. That's the end of the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so officially, that's the end of the first quarter. Bigger than the news of Texas A&M having a 21 to nothing lead is, is that man. The Johnny Manziel has returned to the field after appearing to hurt his left knee. And it did. It looked like in baseball, the manager and the other players come down the dugout, they tap the starting pitcher, and he heads off to the locker room. You're done for the night. It looked like that for Manziel, but apparently that's not the case. The one that got me was Luke Jokel, the, the offensive tackle. When he came over, his body language said to me, Manziel was done. But you know this medical staff 
They were doing that stress test, checking with the student athlete, are you okay to go? He put his brace on, running in place to see how the movement was. And as you watch him move, it doesn't look like he's injured. So obviously, structurally, the knee is fine. But boy, that body language, and there's that cut there where you have to drop that left leg. But that body language on the sideline, it seemed like Manziel's night was over. And interesting, when you have a Heisman Trophy candidate and maybe the favorite, how it impacts your coaching, we talked with Kevin Sumlin about that. You know, the point about there appears to be some more confusion on the field now with the timing issue. But do you play your guy any, any more or less or try to get him his stats? He's up for the Heisman. He knows all the Heisman voters are watching tonight. You'd never think that's the reason to bring him back in the game mm -hmm. if injured. And Sumlin's point was, hey, the way we've coached all along has probably put him, helped to put him in this position anyway. So we're going to keep doing what we've been doing. All right, first play to start the second quarter is a screen from Manziel to Ben Molina. With all sorts of green in front of him to rip off a big game. Well, we got a clarification on this rule that the receiver can leave from out of bounds to reestablish. So I just wanted to make sure we got that correct. If that was, but remember the play was not confirmed, it was upheld, so they still weren't sure they had the video evidence to, uh, to confirm the call. And so far, Manziel needed, seems to be fine. He's setting and firing and, and right on target that time to Malcolm Kennedy. And does not appear to be showing any ill effects from the, from the injury earlier on the tackle by E.J. Beans. Off the play action. Throwing again, and that's the first catch of the game for Uzoma Wachiku. Kip Edwards brings him down after the short game. Manziel looks fine. I, you know, I think it might have been that the shock of the injury. And now, of course, Johnny Manziel entering the record books, breaking Cam Newton's single season all purple excuse me total offense record records people thought would never be broken it seems to be broken every single year it's quite amazing Manziel that time hands off to Molina and he tries the left side and has enough for the first down back to Wendy Nix Steve thank you very much South Carolina and Clemson a Tied up at seven until Taj Boyd finds DeAndre Hopkins into the end zone. He goes 14-7. Clemson with the lead at home. Steve? All right, Wendy, we go fast here as well. Manziel able to hook up with Kennedy one more time. They're down to the four-yard line where the ball will be spotted after the gain of 25 and looking to add on to their 21-0 lead. And with Missouri on their heels, AM's going very fast. Receivers out to the right. On first and goal. Manziel will keep it himself, and he's brought down at the five. Matt Hoke on top of Manziel. That was a pretty solid hit there by Michael Sand at the end of that play. Obviously had nothing to do with the knee or anything, but Manziel popped right up and went on to the next play. The total yards, certainly an indicator of what, what's on the scoreboard tonight as well. 21 to nothing, and the Yankees looking to add on to that. On second down and goal now from the five after the loss. And Zell will give it to Molina. And he's brought down at the three. Again, it's Matt Hope there. Manziel having to adjust that left knee brace that you know that's one of the things when you put a brace on and you're not used to having it on sometimes it starts sliding around you could get cramping in your calf so there are some things that come along with putting on that big of a brace doesn't seem to have slowed him down very much so far <laughs> and amazingly in the five or six plays since he's returned he showed everything already the stop drop and pass he's run he's been tackled and he's throwing a touchdown pass to his favorite target, Ryan Strope, the senior, on senior night here at Kyle Field has another touchdown. Johnny Football, just fine. 
That looked a little easy, didn't it? Here's Bertolette on for the extra, to extra point. Just not a problem. Ryan Swope, the man who, who gets credit for taking Johnny Manziel under his wing when he first came here. Uh, the touchdown reception there. All is well in Aggieland. You're watching the SEC on ESPN from College Station, Texas, and they just made the announcement in the stadium that Johnny Manziel had, in fact, set the new SEC single-season offensive record for another standing ovation, and it begs the question now, you got a 28 nothing lead, you've broken the record you, you had your sights set on, at what point does he come out of the game, especially the fact he's already been injured tonight? I don't think you do it before the end of the half, but I think that's a very fair question. When we get into the third quarter, because at this point, I don't think it's about numbers for the Heisman. I think it's about them winning this ball game, him playing well, and doing what you just said, break the record. I think that would be enough, but I don't think you do that in Coast Guard until the third quarter. Ball will come out to the 25 on the touchback, and we send it back to Wendy Nix. Steve, thank you very much. The game everybody's been waiting for just about to kick off on ABC USC, the only team standing in the way of Notre Dame and a trip to the national championship game. Notre Dame USC coming up right now on ABC. Wendy, fortunately, Ed and I are not sensitive because we thought the game everyone was waiting to see was, <laughs> was this game. And maybe they've they've seen enough you know, at 28 nothing. You know, everybody who's written off USC in this ball game forgets that if there is one weakness at Notre Dame, it's their secondary. And if you haven't seen Marquise Lee and Robert Woods play, they will torch a, a suspect secondary. So if Notre Dame doesn't get pressure on Matt Whitick, they can get some yards. Missouri able to complete the pass. Kendall Lawrence on the receiving end from Corbin Burkstresser and Missouri. Has 37 total yards of offense tonight to this point. Keep in mind, Texas A&M has three plays of 30 or more yards by themselves. It's been just about the worst possible scenario for Missouri. Second and three. Burks Dresser calling signals. Very patient, cool and calm in the pocket as he completes the pass. And they will be shy of the first down. That was to DGB, if you will. Coverage of Monday Night Football continues on ESPN. First at 6.30. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, that guy Cam Newton pops up again. Cam and the Panthers take on the Eagles. Monday Night Football, Carolina, Philadelphia. 8.30 Eastern Sports Center to follow the game. Here's third down and three. Three receivers to Birch Dresser's right, and he'll look to the left and throw for a first down. And the ball is loose, and Texas A&M has it. Or they're going to say incomplete pass. Marcus Lucas looked like he had a big game for the first down. Rolling on the field was the player was down. First down, Missouri. That's about the first thing that won't go A&M's way tonight. <laughs> view this and that ball looks to me like it was out don't worry fans this should be reviewed and Missouri trying to go fast and there you see the referee <laughs> calling timeout. the previous play is under further review no kidding I'm not sure that the fans influenced it but maybe <laughs> so I take that back that maybe everything still might go the Aggies way when we come back back to Kyle Field as we await the ruling on the field, it's a pass complete at the 48. And if it stands, it would be the fourth first down for Missouri. Now, the only thing I can think that they're talking about, because this looks like indisputable video evidence to me, that uh, Devontae Harris got that ball out. But the question, I think, is whether this was the continuous action out of the play. Because the side judge had ruled the receiver down, the, the ball After has After further to review, Replay shows it was a fumble before the player went down. 
Therefore, it's Texas A&M's ball at the 46-yard line. First down. Marcus Lucas did, in fact, fumble that football. The call reversed. But what they have to do, and it, it's the term is immediate action of the play, they have to make sure because the receiver was ruled down and a whistle may have also blown at that time, did the defense recover the ball in the immediate action after play? In my opinion, it did. So I think that this was the correct overturn. So clean living and a lot of Dixie chicken for the Aggies of a and But everything is going their way tonight. 28 to nothing. If you're just joining us, Johnny Manziel was injured earlier, hurt his left knee, missed a series, and returned with a touchdown pass. No problem. Apparently, he heals quickly, too. Manziel just got it over the defender. That would have been an easy interception. Was looking for Uzoma Wachiku. And as you see, 15 of 18 passing has been very accurate prior to that last throw. On second down and ten now. Three receivers out to his left. He's looking that way. And he finds Swoop across midfield in the Missouri territory. Matt White brought him down. Swoop really having a nice end of his career here at Texas A&M. He plays that inside slot receiver. So important in this Texas Tech spread offense that Cliff Kingsbury runs because that guy has to work against linebackers, safeties, corners, and has to have a great feel of coverage. If you want a name in the NFL to remember, Wes Welker plays that spot. And a first down. Texas A&M will keep the chains moving as Swoop again. That's a pretty fair compliment, Wes Welker. And this is a guy who's got good speed, good hands, understands offense. I, I think he's going to find himself playing next uh, next year in the NFL. It's Swoop again. Three times the charm. And Swoop is bumped out heavily by Cody Number Ely. Right. Standouts on that Missouri defense. That's some words for him. And Ely very lucky he did not get a ball for a personal foul there. He led with his shoulder and elbow. If he had dropped his head some more, they may have gotten him for targeting against a defenseless player. I don't think they should have, but he was very close. Short gain on second and seven. Here's Manziel picking up the first down and many more yards down to the 24-yard line. Jarvis Harrison pulling out to make the big block for him. And there you see the design run for the quarterback. And looks like he's full stride. A little bit of an awkward slide there, though, as that left knee got caught underneath of him. Gain of 15 from Manziel, rushing that time. Good pass. Look at that clean pocket and time to do that. It is juggled in and out of the hands of Kenrick McNeil. E.J. Gaines was there as well. Well, this ball looked like it got through. Well, no, that was great coverage. There's our guy E.J. Gaines again. He's having himself a nice ball game in a very tough effort for Missouri, but that was a great break underneath the receiver by Gaines. Gaines now 10 passes broken up. It's all his Tiger teammates in that department. Manziel will hand off to Ben Molina. And he'll be dropped at the 22-yard line, bring up a third down. Of course, third down has been no problem. All season long, Texas A&M second in the nation. They're eight for eight, converting on third down. That's a killer for Missouri. Can't get off the field. Here's third down, going for it. And overthrew his intended target, Mike Evans, who was looking for a penalty flag. And Evans is the guy they look for here. Evans was in a battle over there with Gaines. And there is a flag. Looked like it came out late. Offside on the defense, number 57. That's a five-yard penalty, third down. Well, you talked about getting off the field on third down. Finally, you play some defense, and you jump into the neutral zone. What a huge, huge mistake. I believe that was Lucas Vincent. Or excuse me, Shane Ray. What a big mistake. So it's a third down and one instead of a field goal kind of situation. And it's Molina. Brought down inside the 10-yard line, but they laugh at third and one here. 
That's no problem at all. Makes up a first and goal now. And now they go fast. Boy, they've been doing amazing stuff. Like like Toying with Missouri at this point. 27th snap in Missouri territory for Texas A&M. The Tigers, zero. Zero plays on the A&M side of the field. And, of course, zero points on the big scoreboard. The eight and a half to play here in the first half. Steve Levy, Ed Cunningham, and Kaylee Hartung from College Station, Texas. Tenth play of this drive. 930, And Mantell, if you heard, he was injured earlier. Looks to be just fine. Rolling to his left. But keep it and push that on the five-yard line. And he'll get out of bounds. No reason to absorb another hit there. Well, and also, you know, this is part of the maturity that the coaches talked to him about in spring ball. There were two guys that were showing a little, two AM guys that were showing a little bit of color in the end zone. I bet you in spring ball, he would have tried to fit a ball in there. But that one, there was no reason to take that risk. In the first quarter, we saw him clearly throw one out of the end zone. So it's all part of the maturity process. For the red chip freshman, Johnny Manziel. Manziel trying to spit out of traffic there. Nearly caught from behind. Makes the throw for the highlight kind of touchdown. Mike Evans there, and the Manziel show alive and well here at Kyle Field. <laughs> Cody Ealy thought he had him, and, and then like so many plays we've seen this season, he didn't. And for some reason, the clock is running. Point after touchdowns are untimed down, so they'll have to put uh, probably 20, 25 seconds back on the clock. Please reset the game clock to 7.23. 7.23 on the game clock, please. About 10 seconds. Seemed like a little more than that ran off, but not feeling like that 10 seconds is going to matter. <laughs> Missouri doesn't want any time added on the clock either. 10 for 10 now on third down. Touchdowns coming up third down. What are you going to do with that? Extra point is good. Make it 35 nothing. The thing that is so amazing about this guy is when it look, you've got it. Ely has him, and he runs out from underneath of him. He is so slippery, and then the accuracy to come back to a receiver that's becoming his go-to, one of his go-to guys, Mike Evans. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. If you thought that crowd shot was from this game, you're wrong. They got some 15,000 fans in the building last night at midnight for what they call the Midnight Yell. One of the countless great traditions they have here in Aggieland. And I, personally, I can tell you, you, know, you, you grow up seeing the home of the 12th man your whole life. And for me, my first visit ever, it's pretty neat scene to see here in person. Did you learn all the moves, the hand signals, Only got a back couple. and forth? There's a lot of stuff going on there. <laughs> there are a lot of gyrations going on. Johnny Manziel has two passing touchdowns. We have yet to see him on a rushing touchdown tonight. I think you should give him half of that one before, though. Don't yeah, you think? Fair enough. About a half rush, half pass. 35 nothing in favor of Texas A&M. And the nightmare season for Coach Pinker really continues on. Said in his 22 years, he's never lost a starting quarterback. And they've had all sorts of injury woes throughout the season. James Franklin missing games, missing practices. But I'll tell you what, even if Franklin was healthy, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have made up for 35 nothing here tonight. Back to Wendy Nix. Steve, thank you very much. The AP number one team has fallen in each of the last two weeks. Notre Dame trying to buck the trend. This game just underway, but the Irish set to kick a field goal here. They drove down in the opening possession. USC kicking Notre Dame on the receiving end. And the Irish, the only thing standing in the way of the to a national title trip are the Trojans. And it's up and good. 3-0 Irish. All right, Wendy, thank you. Keep us posted on the events of tonight out in Los Angeles. 
Good Heisman battle will take place on the field there. No company for Manziel here tonight. Spencer Neely, another, another tackle there. Neely has just been dominant so far tonight. Watch him playing at that true nose guard position. He has just been, I, I'm not so sure that Neely's not getting a tip on the snap. He's getting on the snap count. He's getting off on that ball awfully quick. You'd assume Missouri's in a silent count with this much noise, but Neely, his fast twitch muscles are really on point tonight. Good genes. Neely's dad played in the NBA as that pass falls incomplete. His dad, Ed, is an NBA champion with the Chicago Bulls on that 92-93 team with a whole host of talent on that team like Michael Jordan. Tough season for James Franklin, luckily for him in Missouri, just a junior. When he got things going towards the end of the season, he was playing very well, and that's the shame of it for him and uh, for the Missouri Tigers. It's just been one of those seasons coming into the SEC the first season, just too many things stacked against him on the injury front, including the starting quarterback. It was third and 14. Berkshire are under pressure, out of it now, throws, and is it caught? It is for the first down. Jimmy Hunt on the receiving end for the first down gain of 14. Well, here you saw some of that arm strength we've been talking about for Burke Stresser. Here he is on the move. Good, good movement out of the pocket. Good job turning his shoulders, keeping him square, but that was a tight window that he fit that into. And there's a Texas A&M player. He's a fish. Excuse me. Yeah. This is kind of the luck Missouri has had, right? The injuries to all their players. Now even an official on the field in their game is injured. And that's the referee, Matt Leffler. And crews travel with a substitute. But the hard part is that job, that referee job, is so important. And it takes years and years and years of experience for guys to get to that place where they not only can uh, officiate their position and what they have to watch, but also have command of all of everything, including the communication. So um, this could be a tough thing for these officials to overcome because Leffler, the leader, may be done. We'll check his status when we come back. We're back at Kyle Field. They attend to the referee here. And hard to tell what happened to Matt Leffler. He, he was off frame in his position which is set up behind and to the side of the quarterback but as he came off obvious his day is done he took off his communication equipment he handled his uh, he handed his mic to Michael Shirley who's the line judge so perhaps Shirley will go to the referee and it looked like the backup official they had was an umpire so Brent Sal the uh, soul excuse me the umpire may switch as well we're going through the two deep of today's officials in the game Michael Shirey, the line judge, we're told, is being wired up right there to assume the position. And think about for Missouri. They get, I believe, their first first down of the ball game. And so all, their momentum. all the momentum just goes right out the window. And not to make light of it. I no. mean, the, the man is hurt, and, and we hope he's okay. But there goes the white hat to Michael Shirey. So he goes to referee from line judge. Excuse me, Shirey. Maybe the first referee report in Kaylee's young, brilliant career. Kaylee. Thank you, Steve. So you've seen the line judge being mic'd up. Well, now the alternate, Michael Lowe, he will replace the line judge. So they're shifting things around as they wrap up our injured referee's right calf at the moment. Kaylee Hartung, thank you. Both teams and the Zebras as well. She's got it all covered down on the field. Six and a half to play here in the first half. All a and to this point. Maybe now about some respectability for Missouri. And that pass is off the mark. Brooks Dresser was under heavy pressure there. And Missouri very lucky that that was not ruled a backwards pass because that would have been a loss of about seven or eight yards. So the balls say about the 29 and a half. And it lands on the 28. That's a backwards pass. So 
They'd have lost about six and a half yards, so catch a break there. Second down and ten. Bush says, look at the time he has, and then finally under some pressure, and he'll just sail it out of bounds. The word on Matt Leffler. Our referee. <laughs> Our referee is a strained calf. And we're, we're hardly joking. I mean, these guys run up yes. and down the field. Yeah. I've, I've trained as an official right. uh, a few years ago, and uh, it, it's more athletic than you think, especially for the guys, the three guys deep. They have to keep up with people when they break away on 80-yard runs. It's part of me that surprise doesn't happen more often mm -hmm. in the heavy traffic areas on the field. Here's third down and 10 now. Bud Stresser, again, with a good pocket there. Under through his intended target. Howard Matthews on the coverage. Was looking to go to T.J. Moe. And the roar of approval from this Kyle Field crowd with 12th man. You know, I'd like to see A&M playing like this run back their whole schedule. See what happens. I think they beat Florida. I think they beat LSU. Flip a coin against Alabama. And we may be talking about this team as good as they are playing at the end of this season. I think this is a team that would be good enough to play for it all. Dustin Harris drifting back to about the 11 yard line of cut up field. Finds a seam and a nice return out to the 32 yard line. The night for Johnny Manziel. Everybody's favorite player early on and then doing his thing before the injury and then after. Um, and and uh, this place got as quiet as I have ever heard a building with 85,000 people. But then on this play, it got as loud as you hear this many people in a building. But when, when Manziel went down, this place, it, it, it's like a mute button got hit. Trey Williams got his first carry there. Can you imagine Twitter and the social media when Johnny Manziel went down? He's already at 243 yards in total offense. And we have five and a half minutes left in the second quarter. And he missed the better part of the season. <laughs> Got plenty of time now. Now under a little duress and throws. And of course, he completes to Malcolm Kennedy out to midfield. Is it just me, or does number 84 always look wide open when Menzel takes off? I wonder if it's Kennedy just has such a great feel for the scramble drill. You know, Cliff Kingsbury, and we'll let this play go, but Cliff Kingsbury brought, brings a uh, scramble drill, the likes of which I've never seen. Manziel is going to go draw there. Instead, he throws it up for grabs, and it is dropped. Swope was there. He's frustrated at himself. Kip Edwards on the coverage for Missouri. Yeah, a little early jump by Swope. Doesn't quite time his jump perfectly. And watch, look at the great ball fake. And good job stepping up. Careful. Now, those are the types of throws where during the offseason, the coaches are going to say, wait a minute. You're falling backwards. You got a lot of air under that ball in this league. That ball is going to be picked off. That's something they'll try to clean up. You don't want that throw too off. Manziel zips it in there. Again, it's Malcolm Kennedy. And he's inside the 25. Kennedy, who caught the game winning catch for the touchdown against Alabama. Now, this is different. Remember last time you saw him fall back? See that one? He's more on balance. He's able to get his hip turn and throw that ball. That's, that's more like Manziel let somebody else do the running. This time it's Ben Molina. Bring up a second down. What do you do if you are Missouri defensively? Uh, I mean, uh, you just have to feel for Dave Stackle, the defensive coordinator, and the staff. There's a guy in Richardson who's going to be a first-round draft pick. He's a junior likely to come out, and they're just... And here they... Look like they jumped off sides. But they wouldn't have killed it unless they were worried about an unabated player to the quarterback. So let's see if someone from AM. And this is the hard part. 
This is where when you lose Leffler, your referee, all of the communication, right. making sure you have the call right, the number right, the spot. Flip the microphone on. Yeah, it's 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 tough. And they missed the backwards pass, which then Missouri went fast enough to where it didn't get reviewed. Offside oh, defense. Number 57. First down. And that's Dave Steckel, the defensive coordinator for Missouri. And his 12th year on this staff. Almost everybody's in their 12th year on Gary Pinkle's staff. Very well. He's only lost two assistants in those 12 years. One became a head coach. He keeps the familiar people around him. Here's Molina. Inside the 10 will be brought down at the 9 yard line. Kentrell Brothers making his first tackle of the game. You know what this is going to do for Texas A&M this season in recruiting after their first year in the SEC? I, I can't imagine there's not one living room within a thousand miles of this place that they can't get in and have a serious conversation about playing ball here. Look at the time. Johnny Football still has the football. There's the right leg that time. Gets out of that. Crowd on their feet. Manziel on his feet. Touchdown! Of course it is! Ozuma Wachaku on the receiving end of that one. A microcosm of Johnny Manziel's season. Another senior scores on senior night. You have to give the receivers credit for staying alive that long. It looks like he's there's three. It feels like it's five or six seconds sometimes when he's running around back there. It is something they've had to coach. Extra point on the way. And why not? Manziel tonight, 22 of 28 for 249 yards and three touchdowns. How much longer will we be able to enjoy him tonight? Stick around and find out. All AM, late in the first half. Back in Johnny Manziel's house, 42 to nothing. A&M over Missouri, who's still got 3.33 to play in the first half. Here's what starts to happen with a defensive line playing against Texas A&M, is they start to get so worn out that they can't finish the play. And you look at that and you say, how do you not tackle him? Well, he's elusive and he's way stronger than I think anybody thinks he is. I think he's actually a very strong guy. But what happens, it's the pace with which they play their offense. So now you're wearing out the big bodies. And now those big bodies have to chase this guy around for six or seven seconds. And so it looks like, how do you not make that tackle? It's because the defensive line of Missouri and most teams that AM have played this year, their tongues are hanging out, and they just don't have the energy they need to finish the play. Missouri will get the football. And try to do something with it. AM is at 31 snaps in Mizzou territory. Missouri, 24 total plays in the game, regardless of where on the field. Here's Marcus Murphy staying on his feet. An explosive returner is brought down at the 20 yard line. But we asked Coach Sumlin just how much control does he actually have of Manziel on the field? It's kind of funny, you know, there's been times my dad said that uh, they show everybody jumping up and down in the stadium and the team and, and they show me and Cliff just standing there shaking our heads. That was early in the year, you know. He has really grown as, as a player and, uh, you know, it, it took some time for him to understand that, hey, look, we're not, you don't need to score on every play. I can laugh about it now, but it has been frustrating at times, certainly early on in the season and definitely in spring camp. Spring to fall is when they said he made the tremendous stride. And the, the hardest part is earlier in the season, he was doing the magic behind the line of scrimmage, and the receivers for AM had no idea how to stay alive, where they should go, because it lasted for so long. And, and we'll talk a little bit about Cliff Kingsbury coming from Texas Tech. 
during the next uh, a and possession, one of the best guys at teaching the scramble drill in the business, and how they do it is really unique. Brooks Dresser on the option. They'll kick it out. With the... Russell Hansbro gets his first carry of the game. Do you want to get into the comparison game? Does Manziel, you know, you hear Doug Flutie. I didn't know what uh, you, you know, know with Manziel. Flutie, and that's Cliff Kingsbury, the office coordinator and uh, quarterbacks coach. You know, Doug Flutie is actually a pretty good, uh, I think, comparison. Although Manziel's much stronger physically. Right. Russell Hansbro can't hang on there. We send it back to Wendy Ness. Steve, thank you. Coming up on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report, we head to the Coliseum, where the Trojans are the only team standing in the way for Notre Dame, who want to punch their ticket to the national championship game. The SEC made it look easy today, and Ohio State, can they stay perfect? We have the highlights from Columbus. I'm joined by Todd McShay and Robert Smith at the half. On second down and 10, Burke Stresser. And knocked away nicely there by Howard Matthews. Matthews, a good story on that AM defense. Out of the doghouse of the coaching staff and onto the field and making big plays. Good break by Matthews in the secondary for AM has had their struggles this year. But uh, late in the season, they're starting to bring it up. And of course, having Matthews back and playing that well obviously helps. I thought of another comparison. All right. Johnny Manziel. I'll take it. Donovan McNabb. I like it. Brooks Stresser. Let's go. Had plenty of zip on that ball. Out to the 41. They'll spot it. Forward progress to John McGaffey. And now, unfortunately for Missouri, they have to punt back to Texas A&M. Timeout. And A&M uses the timeout to get the ball back. I I know people are saying, well, wait a minute. You know, this is stepping on. But this is the first half. Okay. All, all bets are off in the first half. You play it like it's 0 0 That's all the way through the first half. half. So I don't mind Kevin Sumlin taking this time out to save some time for his offense. Get your NFL started on ESPN 10 a.m. Eastern with Sunday NFL Countdown. Best host in the business, Chris Berman and all the gang provide the latest news from stadiums around the league right up until kickoff. And before you set your lineups, catch fantasy football now at 11 a.m. ESPN 2. Our experts provide the latest news, injury reports, and predict the top fantasy performers. I was going to throw out Fran Tarkington, but I'm not. No one in the, I mean, very few people in the audience have missed. That's going back a long way. No, I but I think it's apropos. You know, Fran was an athletic guy who could throw it and kind of made himself into a good quarterback. I'm sticking with Donovan McNabb. Hey, and I'm, Syracuse. I'm sticking with you. So, what, <laughs> where you go, I go. Oh, the fake punt and plenty of running room. Trey Barrow inside the 40 of A. And a ray of light for Mizzou. Well, this is something obviously the Missouri coaches saw on film is that the middle of the field, when Missouri goes to their spread punt, AM has nobody home. Everybody's turning to trail for the return. Good call. And now Missouri trying to get a little momentum going into the half. This will be their first snap in AM territory. We gonna call a timeout like that? We're gonna do that to you. How do you like me now? On first down and ten. Hand it off to Kendall Lawrence. Lawrence, one of the many Texas Tigers. You know, you mentioned how many Texas Tigers there are. A lot of people thinking around the Missouri program. When they were in the Big 12, they played in this state more often. Well, remember AM, Missouri. They're in different divisions, but they do play each other. But they, Missouri's not going to get to Texas every year. People wondering how that may affect what has been a pipeline to their school. And a completion for another first down. Marcus Lucas knocked out of bounds. Say so play in Texas every year. They've been playing in this stadium every year. A weird scheduling quirk. People was like, it's got to be the first time in history, three straight years in the same stadium and, and losing all of them. And there was a quirk in the Big 12 scheduling when they were both in the Big 12 of why they played back to back. And 
And this this senior class, they were not shy of saying we have never beaten Missouri, the AM senior class, and making that a big focal point of this game. Missouri's won three straight in this series and five of the last six. And a flag flies with a minute 20 left in the half. Ball start. 61. Fly. First down. And they'll push the Tigers back. Aerial coverage being provided by the MetLife blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. And so far, Johnny Manziel and AM have been able to do it all night. 42 0. Their season high is 49 for a first half. Did it against South Carolina. SC State, I beg your pardon, there. And that pass is bobbled around. Is that a loose football? No, they're going to say incomplete. Spencer nearly able to knock it away. Nearly had the pressure. Well, it helps when you block a guy. And that time, Missouri decided not to block Neely. But I don't want to take anything away from the guy. He's having a wonderful night. Last game. Here on his home field. And he's, he's taking a lot of reps. Uh, Kirby Ennis, who plays some nose guard, a bigger body because of the spread, not playing as much. So Neely almost going. It seems like I believe he's been in on every play at that nose guard spot. And he's asking the crowd to get loud. Second and 15 from the 30. Burks Dresser zips one across the middle. It is complete down to the goal line. Number 15, Doriel Green. Doriel Green Beckham, their explosive true freshman who goes 6'6 and has quite a future in front of him. And that was a nice throw by Burks Dresser. Good protection by this offensive line. Finally gave Burks Dresser a little bit of time and found Green Beckham. Nice throw by Burks Dresser, though. That was tight coverage. First and goal, 62 seconds left in the half now. And Missouri's going to have to take a timeout. They didn't have the right personnel on the field for the play that they'd called. Why not? Chance to save some face here in the first half. Timeout, Missouri. That's their first timeout. All the talk about Johnny Manziel. And hey, freshman's never won the award. And, well, some guys have come close. Herschel Walker. <laughs> From the very beginning, I think we all knew what type of man Herschel Walker was going to be. And then, of course, an amazing year for Michael Vick all the way to the national championship game and almost beat Florida State in the uh, in that game. And then, of course, Adrian P Peterson finished second his true freshman year. Michael Vick was a redshirt freshman. But uh, after this performance by Johnny Manziel tonight with 296 yards of total offense, he broke the record of Cam Newton for total offense in the SEC tonight. Let's see what happens out with uh, Manti Tail, what type of game he has tonight. Does he make some big plays? Marquise Lee. And Marquise Lee, who to me is in the top three. I think Marquise Lee is one of the top three players in college football. So let's see what they do. But pretty good showing so far for the freshman. Bad break for Lee, right? A chance to show off with everybody watching with a quarterback making his first start. So he's hurt in that department. Here's first and goal now. And they hand it off. It's Green Beckham. And he takes a loss. Now, Devontae Harris is making some really nice plays. Remember, Harris was the one who had the strip. And this is a guy, true freshman, who was headed to Oklahoma. His dad played here. But Kevin Sumlin immediately went and got on this young man. And you can see why. This guy has a lot of athletic ability and plays hard. You can tell he just goes hard every play. 23 set. Why not spend another timeout if you're going to use up all that time? They hand it off again down to the goal line and in. And Missouri is on the scoreboard with Kendall Lawrence picking up his 12th touchdown of the season for the senior from four yards away. I think they knew they were going to score on that play, so they figured they didn't need the timeout. And the other thinking might be, hey, we don't want to leave Johnny Manziel too much time left on the clock before halftime here. I, I think the, the whole game has been a little confusing for Missouri at this point. You, you feel bad for this team. They are just shorthanded, have been pretty much all season, but they have run into, I, hard to argue, but I, I 
think that you might have the hottest team in the country here for a &M. Snap is high, but it's put down, and Andrew Baggett kicks it through. 42-7 is your score. Doesn't actually change much. The legend of Johnny football. Kerrville Tybee High School as a senior put up ridiculous numbers. The Antlers, of course, for those who love the nicknames out there. Mind-blowing numbers. But, but it, it is hard. You know, the, the level of high school football in Texas is obviously very high. But it is hard sometimes to translate and say, okay, was he just a better athlete than everybody? And then when you get a guy to campus, does that athleticism translate against a higher level of competition? It's just, you'll never know it. And what's funny is, remember, there was a three-way quarterback competition right. through spring ball. They said that two weeks prior to the opening game, they had just announced that Manziel would be the guy, and he got all the reps with the ones. And but there was a while there where, with Jameel Showers, yeah. who was the guy who came in when Manziel went down earlier with the uh, with the injury. But uh, it looked like Showers was going to be the guy through part of spring ball that might win the job. It almost seems amazing that Manziel was just not the guy right from the gate. But again, it was about turnovers for this guy. And Trey Williams will just fall on it there. 13 seconds left in the half. The Manziel bio in the media guide is, is laughable. Now, of course, it's not laughable if you don't know he's going to be the man. No one could forecast what he would. But he's got about four inches, and the highlight is made the travel squad last year. And, of course, next year he'll be 15 pages all by himself <laughs> and on the cover front and center. But, again, coming into this season, no one knew. And I think that's what's great about this story is just the surprise. Aggies will take a knee, and that will be the You know, I, I've half. seen highlights of this guy all year. I've watched parts of games, and I sat down and I watched that Alabama game, and you just see it. It just, he's different. It, he, the way he moves and the confidence he has on the field is astounding. Gave a signature victory, one of the best victories all time for AM, that win in Tuscaloosa. We sent it down to Kaylee. Thanks, Steve. Coach Sumlin, you could hear a pin drop in here when Johnny Manziel went down. What kind of assurances did you need from your medical staff before you were comfortable putting him back out there? Well, we needed assurances from him and from the medical staff. And then, uh, you know, if it was up to him, he was going to play anyway. It's something that's happened to him before. And uh, uh, But, you know, he came back and he said he was ready to go, start running up and down the sidelines. And, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm not shocked. He's broken Cam Newton's record for total offense in the SEC. You're up by 42 points. Will we see more of him in the second half? You know, I don't know. We'll, we'll look at it. I, you know, he's he's wanting to play. It's just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get that managed. And if he does play, it won't be long. Thank you, Coach. All right, you're good. Well, they took him out a week ago with a 40-point lead. Now it's at 42-7 as we hit the half. We we'll throw it back to Wendy Nix for the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. SEC on ESPN and a special shout out to our fine crew all in and around the stadium and in the truck away from their families on this holiday weekend to bring college football to you and your families 42 to 7 the Aggies over Mizzou Steve Levy back along with a very collegial looking <laughs> Ed Cunningham and sellout crowd 14th straight sellout here it looks like still not a single empty seat even with the lopsided score and the fear red must be if i leave i might miss something spectacular and i can't have that happen and you would say okay you're up 42 to 7 you guys should just leave but after what we just saw in the first half and what we've seen all season long with johnny menzel i don't blame them but i think, I think kaylee asked a very fair question of kevin yes. Sumlin. at this score what do we see I think we'll probably see him for at least one more series, but I'm not so sure we're going to see him much after that. All right. And then we'll see how many of these folks stick around. All right. On a night in which Manziel was actually injured and missed a series, he's come back and really just added to the lore, added to the legend. 
the bright side for Missouri. They scored a touchdown at the end of the first half, and they get the ball to start the second half. Marcus Murray from the 10, and he's taken down shy of the 18. Well, if you miss the first half, you miss a show by Manziel. Seemed like every time he scrambled around, Malcolm Kennedy was wide open somewhere. But then that injury you mentioned where E.J. Gaines landed on his leg, went to the side, went into the uh, uh, locker room, got a brace, and then all of a sudden, this stuff started happening. And by this stuff, I mean the stuff that drives people like Dave Steckel, the defensive coordinator of Missouri, crazy. First play from scrimmage for the Tigers, down 42-7. Corbin Burks dressed with their own backup quarterback is running he has the first down and more and a flag flies late but a big gain for burke stresser bud sasser might get called for the block there 30 yard gain likely nullified let's see if that big gain is coming back i think they're going to get an illegal block in the back by sasser Twenty one white block in the back. Ten yards for the spot of the foul. So Sasser is peeling back and he's blocking one on one there with Dustin Harris. Harris had already moved up field. Good call. Remember, we have a backup referee. The line judge came over when our referee Leffler went down with a calf injury. Brent, excuse me, Matt Leffler left and Michael Sheary is the guy who's had to take over that spot with the white hat but he still has the L on his jersey for line judge instead of R for referee. The draw play goes to Kendall Lawrence. Johnny Manziel continues to smash records. There you see the numbers tonight in the first half and again we hope to see more of him at least early on in the second, when AM gets the football. Your first chance to see him in person? You buying in all the hype? Blown away. Uh, the, the, the accuracy that he throws the ball on a regular basis is the part that I don't think I quite saw until you see him down in, down out, throw the ball. Brooks Jester throws that one, and that's complete. LaDamian Washington able to take that off the turf. All right, the grass. This is an agricultural <laughs> school. They want you to know that's the real grass out there, not the field turf stuff. So the three guys that I'll be looking at when I go to make my vote are these. I think these three players have been the best in college football. I think Cl Colin Klein's had a really nice season, but the loss to Baylor, I, I, I can't overcome that as a voter. So those are the three guys I'll be focused on for one, two, three a couple of Mondays from now. In similar fashion, I have a vote for the Jack Adams Award, which is the NHL Coach of the Year. And you won't be voting for it. The NHL, the, for, the sport formerly known as the National Hockey League. Fumbles the snap. Picks it up. Trying to do a little Manziel thing himself. And Bergstresser gets ahead for the first down. Nice job by Bergstresser. It, everything just fell apart. The, the snap was not quite there by Brad McNulty. And when Bergstresser can't handle it, he just immediately takes off. He, he could see that the pocket was falling down, and this is the second time he's picked up some nice yardage. Good blocking downfield. And there at the end. I'm sorry, Ed, for all the talk about Manziel, what an impossible spot for Corbin Bergstresser. The freshman, he has started three games, so he has some experience, but to be in this atmosphere, knowing Manziel's on the other side, knowing you're down big right from the get-go, knowing you almost have to pass at all times, except when you hand off and do this. Kendall Lawrence racing down the sideline, and he's inside the 20-yard line. And what a nice job by Evan Bain, a true freshman, one of the guys who's had to get into the flow. And he's working one-on-one -on -one right there and just completely knocks Obi Oha out of the way. That was a wonderful block by Bain, a true freshman who was a very highly recruited player out of the state of Missouri. Good power blocking there by Bain. The future is bright for this Missouri team, but that won't come tonight. Off the turf again, and 
Lucas touchdown. in for a touchdown. Marcus Lucas for 18 yards from Corbin Bergstresser. And Missouri has scored 14 unanswered. Here we go. <laughs> we sit there and think, you know, at 42 to 7, this thing's over. And all of a sudden, Missouri comes out. Ooh, I'm not so sure. You said turf again, by the way. Yeah, That's I know. grass. Yeah. Well, turf can, grass can be called turf. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so sure that that, yeah, I'm not so sure that ball was caught. They should have snapped that one a little yeah. quicker. <laughs> All right, put a hold on those uh, potential 14 Previous unanswered play points. Is on a review. We'll check the flag when we come back. They have an incomplete pass. The ball will go to the 18-yard line. Will be second and 10. Indisputable. Please reset the game clock to 12:15. I don't see the indisputable video evidence. We watched this at break, yep. during break, about seven times. I think the ball touches the ground, but that's not the level of proof you need. You need indisputable video evidence, and I didn't see a look that told me that. Again, it, it, I think, and logically, you think, yes, it touched the ground, but I didn't see a look that uh, was indisputable, in my opinion. Take those six off the board. There's Burke Strasser, throw to his left. Hooking up with Doriel Green Beckham for the short game. Julian Obioha on the tackle there. And what a bummer for Missouri. You get it to 42 to 14. You get it overturned, and here you are third and long. And, and you know, you're in four down territory. I, I just don't think there's any way that you kick a field goal here down 42 to 7. So you, you can run a draw here, potentially, because you're thinking four down, I think. Six to snap it. They get it away, no problem, on third and eight. Butch Dresser is firing, and his receiver fell down. Was there contact? There is a flag. Marcus Lucas, the intended target. I think they're going to get an illegal chop. Personal foul, chop box, number four on the white. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. Kendall Lawrence is going to make a cut block as the guard Max Copeland comes off to pick up the blitzer. That's number 45, Stephen Jenkins. A legal block by the running back, but when the guard comes in and hits him high, it's the old high-low block. They used to... Have a lot of different ways to call that, but uh, that was just a mistake by the guard coming off because it looked to me like Lawrence had the linebacker in blitz pickup. In the blink of an eye, it was 42-14. That might stay at 42-7. This is a third and 23. Maybe worried about getting out of field goal range at some point. Well, there's a completion well shy of the first down. You're still going here? Well, and I think the reason that Texas A&M, instead of making Missouri go to fourth down, was because... They needed to back them up because they were getting too close. But I, and here you are at fourth and a mile, and you just don't have a choice but to kick the field goal. Andrew Baggett, just 13 of 19. And I don't, you know, they faked the punt. I don't think if, yeah, the fake here is hard at this long a distance for the first. From 43 yards away, did he get it? He got it. The kick is good. And Mizzou hits double digits on the scoreboard. It's not 14, but they'll take it. 42-10. 10 unanswered by the Tigers. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Marmot High Performance Outdoor Clothing and Equipment. Marmot for life. Santa's Wonderland is the season. Just south on State Road 6, celebrating 15 years in College Station, featuring millions of dazzling Christmas lights on a winding path over a mile long, attracts thousands of visitors each year. And if you look at that drive chart, Johnny Manziel's been good. He's going to have something under his tree, I would think. Uh, and look, I was not a math major, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure 100 percent right. right for touchdown. OK, I'm just making sure. So that's the result you're trying to achieve, right? That's <laughs> what we're going for. Yeah. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. Not a single FG there. <laughs> punt. What's a punt? A&M will receive from the two-yard line. Trey Williams out to the 25, maybe the 26. And will we see number two in Maroon again? Of course we will. He's Johnny Football. He plays more than a half, as you expected, Ed. And I bet there's some fans wondering, because it is hard to see. Let's hear if there's a reaction when they see that he is going to play some more. No. Oh, hum. <laughs> Is this a good time to give out a shout out to Ryan Epperson? He's the Aggies punter. We might not say his name anymore today. After that first play from scrimmage for a loss, we sent it back to Wendy Nix. Steve, thank you very much. It's a Dr. Pepper conference update. We go back to Death Valley. Clemson hosting South Carolina, the Tigers with the four point lead, but opening possession of the second half, Dylan Thompson to Ace Sanders. The Gamecocks have since added a field goal. 2014 on the road. Thank you, Wendy. Pass incomplete. That was Manziel looking for Swope and uh, EJ Gaines there to break it up. A little inaccurate throw there. Gaines has had a really nice ball game. He, he was the guy who actually he made the tackle, clean tackle that put uh, Manziel out. But uh, no matter how well he's played, it's been tough on third down for Missouri to get off the field. Showed you the drive chart, that perfection. 10 for 10 on third down conversions. That also is 100%. Here's Manziel now, feeling some of the heat, doing what he does best, the mobility and throwing on the run and completing the swoop. Gets a block from Molina and able to turn the corner. Wow. That's the reason you don't leave the game early. <laughs> Watch the freeze. Escapes. Good rush, pocket collapse, and right there just absolutely freezes Coney Neely. Hand off there out to the 42 for Ben Molina. You know, that's the part of this offense that if they can get going as they make the transition to the SEC, if they can have an inside power running game on top of the spread, on top of Manziel's ability to throw and run, be awfully good offense for the next couple of years. Straight drop and the throw is on the mark. Hits Mike Evans. You know, you mentioned recruiting earlier for Kevin Sumlin and all the TV sets and everybody watching. Their cupboard's almost already full. I, the count I have, they've already had 29 commitments. That's the most in the country. Dance card's pretty full. They might be looking at the 2014. I mean, that, that's when life is good, right? In terms of recruiting. Here's Manziel. Look at, look at the time to peruse the situation from the pocket and now tuck it and try to get back to the line of scrimmage. Stopped there by Andrew Wilson. How tired do you think Andrew Wilson and his mates are trying to track this guy down? Wilson, a guy who earlier had Menzel, and Menzel put one of those little dead leg moves on him, and but that time Wilson comes through and makes a tackle. But I just can't imagine how difficult it would be to, to defend this many snaps. Forget who the player is, right? How many staff snaps you have to defend? Pass completed for a short gain to Malcolm Kennedy there, bring up a third down, which is as we know is not a problem. This is the 63rd play for Texas A&M on offense and we're not quite halfway through the third period. It's it's just staggering how quickly they go. Dave Steckel in the Missouri's defense they were prepared for your average game you get 62 snaps on defense. He figured they'd be well over 100 in this game and they are well on their way to that under eight minutes now clock ticking away third quarter 42 to 10 and it's Manziel on the run and throwing a perfect spiral knocked out of bounds at the 30 is Darrell Walker and he's spreading the wealth everybody's touching the football for the Aggies starting to get a feel and as they go into spring football and offseason training that's one of the places where this young man can grow is just understanding where all the receivers are when things break down he has gotten much better obviously Overthrew airmail that target might have been doing it out of, on purpose. Swope wouldn't have had much there even if he made that play. Not worth absorbing the hit. 
But you know earlier in the year Nick Saban made some waves when he was talking about the pace of offense and do we really want offenses running this many plays and it was a little bit of sour grapes from a defensive coach but there is a safety issue you start defending 90 hundred plays draw to Molina nothing doing there brought down at the 30 by Matt Hope but when you start having to defend this many plays it's like playing five quarters per game and there is an argument to be made that players don't move their legs as often there's a lot of piles and there's Dave Steckle, the defensive coordinator, but all defensive coordinators around the country, I, I think they need to start having conferences talking about how do we defend this stuff because with athletic quarterbacks who can throw accurately and power run game, it just starts to become really hard. On a third and 11, Manziel flushed, throw across his body, incomplete, but there is a flag on the play. Two flags on the play, in fact. That time he was looking for Kenrick McNeil, Randy Ponder on the coverage. See if one of them is on number seven. The officials will discuss amongst themselves and then tell us. And you see the L there with the white hat. Usually you see the R with the white hat, but we had, if you're just joining Matt Leffler, the referee went down with an apparent calf injury, and the line judge, Michael Sheary, had to come over, put the white hat on, and the microphone. But with two penalties, again, it's about communication, trying to figure out what it is. Good job by Sherry taking over this crew. There are two fouls on the play. I had holding number 31 on defense. That penalty is declined. Uh, pass interference. Number seven on the defense. That'll be a uh, spot foul, automatic first down. It is indeed Ponder hit with the flag. There's the hold there. Yes, I would. Yes, <laughs> I, I, that is the definition of holding. <laughs> Actually, that was that was on our main EJ Gaines. Yeah. But it was Ponder trailing on the throw across the middle that he got there just a touch early. With a reverse. Throwing to Mansell. It was just behind him. Kenrick McNeil on the reverse and then the toss looking for Manzel. This is a Heisman call. And I say that facetiously, but you know, this is Cliff Kingsbury, the offensive coordinator, saying, you know what? We've had a lot of fun tonight. Let's see if we can't get Manziel a touchdown and give our guy E.J. Gaines. E.J. Gaines. Hey, he's the one who was there. Gaines has had a nice ball game. Good read on that one. If the ball was thrown a little earlier, it might have been a touchdown. But give, but give Gaines a lot of credit for finishing that play. Gaines looks gassed, by the way, and it's certainly understandable. Here's Manziel. Little quarterback draw. Try the right side. Ten. Did he get there making it look easy, untouched. His first rushing touchdown of the game to go along with three passing touchdowns. And if he was the favorite of the Heisman coming into tonight, even that much more so now. Flip the palms up like, yeah, what do you do? What are you, what are you gonna do? What do you want from me? What else can I do? Well, one of the things that you start doing when you have a quarterback like Johnny Manziel is you end up with your receivers becoming very good blockers downfield. Watch the blocks by Swope and Evans. Evans getting away with a little bit of a hold there potentially on E.J. Cage, but that work always pays off with a guy like this. I am told that the only way to appropriately say hello to you is howdy here in Aggieville and haven't been downright hospitable to the folks from Missouri thanks to Johnny Manziel celebrating its eighth year sponsoring the good hands field goal nets all state makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick to date all state has contributed more than three million dollars in scholarship monies with the way offenses are playing, all state better look for another deal because there's a lot of extra points now. You gotta reinforce those nets. Yeah, right? exactly. Six and a half to play here in the third quarter. 
to all Aggies tonight. Although my sports center colleague John Anderson reminds me Missouri has an excellent journalism school. <laughs> Him and How would he know? <laughs> excellent point by you. And <laughs> back to Wendy Mix. Steve, thank you. USC has never lost when trailing at the half under Lane Kiffin, which does not bode well for the Trojans. Here's why. Max Wittick picked off by Kavari Russell, and that would set up this Notre Dame field goal career long for Kyle Brenza. 52 yards as time expired in the first half. 16-10, Irish. Keep us posted, Wendy. Thank you. Here it's 49-10. Texas A&M over Missouri. Longtime rivals in the Big 12 trying the SEC on for size in their first seasons. It's a very nice season for A&M. And it is Burke Stresser carrying around the left side. And he's got it up for the first down. Corbin Burke Stresser showing some signs. Aerial coverage being provided by the MetLife blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do that. Now Missouri showing a little bit of life at the end of the half, and it's a lot of it is the fact that Bergstrasser is starting to pick up some really nice yardage on the ground. And that ball is batted down by who else? Spencer Neely, the high motor guy on that defense for AM, knocked it away. Neely, a guy who had a wonderful game against Alabama. And who knows what his test out is going to be when he goes uh, to try out for the NFL. Who knows what his 40 is going to be and all of that. But when they put the film in and see the effort and productivity, I don't see how you don't give this guy a shot. And, and human nature, it's 49 to 10. There's no let up. <laughs> no. At all. And again, no one has left this stadium at 49 to 10, approaching late stages third quarter, for fear they might miss something from Johnny Manziel. And I, you know, I think a lot of this also is Texas A&M was tired of hearing people say you can't compete in the SEC. You don't have the athletes. You don't have the big body guys. You can't compete in this league. And I think there's a lot of pride in this building. After their first year, they're going to be at 10 and two. Get a wonderful bowl game out of this deal. And I think everybody in the SEC says, wait a minute, who did we invite to join? <laughs> Whoops. Third down and seven. Bergstresser behind his intended target and nearly picked off by Dustin Harris. Had it in his hands. The move to the SEC, they call it the 100-year decision here at A&M, and you see how they've done in, the first, in their first season playing big boy football, as they call and it. There's no way you can look at those Missouri numbers and, and, and pull anything out of them until you look at what happened to their roster. Lost three starting offensive linemen. Henry Josie was not ready to go this year. A guy who was over 1,200 yards last year before he got hurt. Their quarterback's been in and out, so it's not really fair to look at that in Missouri and, and think it's indicative of what Missouri may do in this league. And Gary Pickle said it right away. He said, look, this is not our team. No. This is not our team. And sometimes that can be sour grapes, but he's got he's got a real reason to say that this time around. AM will get the football back. The 14th annual ACC Big Ten Challenge tips off Tuesday night on ESPN. 7:30, the early game. CJ Leslie leads the Wolf back against Tim Hardaway Jr. and the Wolverines. The nightcap, UNC in Indiana. James Michael McAdoo leads the Tar Heels against Cody Zeller, the number one ranked team in the nation. The ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. And you think of the SEC as a uh, football conference. Basketball, Mizzou's doing just fine. Ranked 13th in the nation, the basketball program for Missouri as they hit the SEC. <laughs> Although they fell to Louisville last night. Well, here, here is my guess. I think this is the last series that we're going to see of Johnny Manziel. So, AM fans and college football fans who enjoyed watching him, I think this might be it for the regular season. And here's some good helmet cracking there. Trey Williams, so fast, has the sideline. One man to beat, and he can't beat him. Braylon Webb, the last man to knock him out of bounds, gain a 41. 
for the explosive Trey Williams, a true freshman. And a guy that, had he not battled a hamstring injury there in the middle latter part of the season, may have been more in the mix, but you start to see why the coaches are so excited. Manziel's throwing, and that was wide open and dropped. Mike Evans had it. It was almost too easy, too wide open, took his eye off the football. You don't even want to go back to the huddle. And he's not. He's just going to stay off to the side because obviously AM does not huddle. So luckily for Evans. And EJ, EJ Gaines came up under on the underneath route. I'm not it, there was a safety over the top, but I think that might have been a mental bust by Gaines. But Evans lucky that AM doesn't huddle because he doesn't have to go back and feel the wrath of the quarterback. No huddle and no playbook. Coach Sumlin says, what's the point of a playbook? Somebody gets a hold of it, they put it on the internet. That's not helping anybody out. And Manziel will take a timeout. 4.35 to play here in the third. Johnny Football and the Aggies on their way up 49-10. They say he's competitive. And there's the look. Not happy. Not satisfied up 49 10. It's one of the things the coaches had to get used to with him is he would make a mistake and Kevin Sumlin and his offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury would go over there to you know tell him hey you've got to do this and he was so hard on himself they did end up patting him on the back you're gonna be okay pick it up because he can be a very emotional guy. Someone said he was thinking about trying that with his wife before his wife can yell at him. He would get mad at himself <laughs> Get so angry with himself. Maybe his wife will cut him a break too. Let's see if that works at home Here's Manziel avoids one man and then fires to a wide open target and Evans has that one not for six But down to the 15 and that was the exact same route combination to that side that they ran on the play that Evans dropped it They saw that EJ Gaines was jumping the un underneath route and Kingsbury, a former quarterback at Texas Tech. And there was a flag. I didn't see that flag come down. It was blocked by the by the bodies. But that happened, obviously, at the end of the play, which makes you think it might have been a personal foul. Evans over 1,000 yards receiving. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Number 13, offense. Penalties 15 yards. First down. This is after the play. Yeah. Obviously, you're not supposed to do that. I'm not sure. Yeah, you have to call that if you're an official because it is part of the rules, but that seemed a little light. Black, black, black. Evans over a thousand. Three years in a row now. AM is at a thousand yard receiver. And add Evans to the list. To try the ground game to Trey Williams. Kentrell Brothers brought him down. Clock ticking, winding under four minutes here in the third quarter. 49-10. It was 42-7 at halftime. Here's Manziel. Good protection. Put some air underneath. And off the fingertips, did he hang on? No. Kenrick McNeil had it. Would have been a beauty of a catch. Could not hang on. Nice throw, though, by Johnny Manziel. I was watching him during warm-ups work on this throw and putting different loft on it. And this one, he decided to do what's called a buzz throw, which means you take the air off it because the receiver, you, you know if you get it to him faster, he's got that half a step. And that throw was just six inches of being perfect. Coverage is actually pretty good. It was very good. Third down and eight. Of course, third down has not been a problem. Manziel, eight of eight, we're passing on third down. Do I hear nine of nine? No. Looking for a flag was Malcolm Kennedy. Won't get it. Randy Ponder on the coverage that time. Well, a real life fourth down coming up here. Well, I don't know that it's going to matter, but that goes back to Evans in the penalty room. That was a yep. first down inside inside the 15. They still got a first and 10 after the play because the result of the play was a first down. But maybe that was some of the leftover frustration from the drop two plays earlier by Evans. 
Here's Bertolet. Had some trouble with the medium range stuff. This from 45. And whistle. There's a flag down in the end zone. Delay a game on the kicking team. Penalties five yards. That's going to make it a 50 yarder. Yeah, Kevin Sumlin wanted to <laughs> challenge his kicker a little bit. Bertolet has hit two 50 yard field goal, 50 plus yard field goals. So he's got the leg. It's the intermediate stuff that's been a problem for Bertolet. One of six with field goals from 30 to 39 yards. Ball spotted at the 40. Uh, but I beg you, he'll kick it from the 40. Spotted at the 33 yard line. Making it a 50 yard attempt. To push him over 50 yards, 50 points on the scoreboard. Oh, yeah. It's all good for AM. Taylor Bertolet's third field goal from 50 yards or beyond this season makes it 52 to 10. Johnny Manziel, the college football world awaits to hear from him publicly. When might that come? Coach Sumlin, what about it? The season's coming to an end. Uh, and, and I've said all along, you know, it, we'll see what happens, but uh, we'll, we'll have a plan for it next week. And, Regular season's over with, so you know I, I think uh, um, you know I'm not speaking for for everybody in this situation, but I know it's helped him. I know his parents have been happy about it, and, and uh, I know it couldn't help but but uh, help his focus this year because you know as a young guy you got a lot of things going on. As you look at Johnny Manziel, we know he'll speak on Monday. Still hoping he might talk to us after the game. Wishful thinking. <laughs> this has been a hot button topic. Where, where do you stand on this? Uh, you know, is this hurting his Heisman chances by not being able to hear from the kid? I think just the opposite. I think the intrigue of not letting freshmen. This is not a Johnny Manziel rule. This is a rule about freshmen not talking to the media. I think it's actually helped with some of the intrigue, quite frankly. That'll be a touchback. They'll bring it back out to the 25-yard line. And I guess as long as you're consistent, but, you know, as someone has said, there are other players who are, who are freshmen nobody has asked to, to speak <laughs> with, but everybody wants to talk about Manziel. And you just, you don't have a feel for the guy if you're, if you're national. You know, maybe if you're a local, you know who he is. Is he, is he funny? Is he quiet? You know, what kind of personality is he, does he have? And you want to hear from him. But, but if you think about what Manziel would have gone through had they just let him speak to the media, because this is not a normal freshman. This is not a normal situation. This is Texas A&M, Texas football in general, is bigger than almost every other place in the country. Imagine how many requests they would have had to have <laughs> Just from ESPN, yeah. as we go down to Kaylee Hartung. Kaylee. When I jokingly asked the A&M media relations folks if there would be any media training for Johnny before his big debut, they said, not really. We think he can handle it. This is a guy who anytime he's played for a team prior to now, he's been the spokesperson. So go back to high school. Those days in Kerrville, he was the spokesperson for their team, and he is very confident in his ability to get in front of the cameras and talk. And, and oh, by the way, they let him tweet all the time. He's got some 60,000 followers on Twitter, and that's not an issue, but... But speaking is again, we'll, we'll hear from our Monday wide open. Talk about a busted coverage with Damian Washington. Touchdown. Touchdown. How about 75 yards from Corbin Burkstresser? And the score gets a little more respectable. You would expect that a safety would have been in the neighborhood for Texas A&M because Washington was cut loose to that second level. And you can see Terrell walking over with the hands up of what was the call. And I think that's exactly what happened is the secondary for A&M had two different coverages called. Andrew Baggett. No. Are you kidding? Point is no good. All right, that's the kind of night, kind of season. Missouri. 52, Missouri 16. Well, Damian Washington had a 61, 69-yard touchdown earlier, and now this big one. 
Well, you could see the safety in the middle of the field coming down and, and giving chase there at the end is Steven Terrell. But it was the safety on the other side. Terrell was the safety to the right. It was the safety on the left who came down towards the line of scrimmage. And had no idea that Washington was running vertical. They get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN 10 a.m. with Sunday NFL Countdown. The best in the business, Chris Berman and the gang provide all the latest news from stadiums around the league right up until kickoff. And before you set your lineups, catch Fantasy Football Now, 11 a.m. here on ESPN2 as our experts provide the latest news, injury reports, and predict the top fantasy performers. 52-16. Two and a half to play here in the third quarter. You know, this is a place where Missouri may want to think about an onside kick. They've already tried the fake punt. I, I'm just uh, there's there's almost no scenario where they come back, but why not throw something in here? The kick is in the air. And Trey Williams, eight yards deep in the end zone, will take a knee. The legend of Johnny Football. This the signature victory of the season and of some time and maybe the signature play for Manziel. You know and, and going into that game and turning on I just I said well I you know Adam's not going to be able to hang with these guys Alabama's rolling and you watch that game and I, I'm actually a little shocked he's in the ball game here I, I think it, I think this is the point where it's not about numbers it's not it's about health. And we've already seen him go down once tonight. I, I think they're playing him a little too long. Completes there to Trey Williams. Hey, did you have A.J. McCarron on your Heisman list before, sure before Johnny yeah. and, and the fellas got through with them in Tuscaloosa? Yeah. So Man, I, Manziel took care of him. Yeah. But I think at some point Kevin Sumlin just has to make the choice that the game is in the bag. I know we're not into the fourth quarter yet, but at some point, especially the way this young man plays, it's not like he has a slowdown switch. And, and he's firing, he's throwing, and is he being picked off? He is. E.J. Gaines, the most talked about Tiger on defense tonight, picks off Johnny Manziel. It's a young quarterback. Let's not forget this is a freshman. Watch how long Manziel looks to his right. He's on that receiver the whole way. And you see how that ball came out just a little bit wobbly? Sometimes when the ball doesn't have a tight spiral, it slows down considerably on the way there. But I think it was the eyes of Manziel that let Gaines know exactly where he was going with that ball. And that's another thing going into the offseason, things to work on, things to get better. So first and ten, first turnover tonight. And Missouri starts with great field position as they're down to the 40-yard line. Kendall Lawrence. Stopped by Spencer Neely. What does that mean again? You know, if you look at this Missouri team, and again, it's just unfair that in their first year in the SEC that Gary Pinkle has had to deal with the level of injuries that they've had. But if you look at this team going into next year, and some of the guys they have coming back, including their quarterback, James Franklin, this could be a pretty explosive group. They've had six games this season they had decided in the last drive. They've won three of those games and lost three, and it's Lawrence again for some good yardage and the first down they'll move the change. And if you look at some of the guys that will be coming back Bame is a guy we showed you earlier with that block very tough guy James Franklin if they can get Henry Joseph uh, healthy from that catastrophic knee injury he had last year he's an NFL back Justin Britt comes back at tackle and you've already talked about Green Beckham and what a special talent he is it's a pretty good group for 2013. It's Lawrence there. Green Beckham was, by rivals, the number one recruit in the nation at any position. And the coaching staff said, as, as advertised, he'll have a great future. Explosive, and the, you know, obviously want to get the ball in his hands. And the one thing that Gary Pinkle has done a great job, the state of Missouri doesn't have a lot of high school players that come out that are elite. But since Gary Pinkle has got there, he has made it their goal to get as many as they can. And Beckham, uh, Green Beckham is one of those guys that was an elite guy that decided to stay home and play at Missouri. So a good get for the Tigers. Bergstresser. 
able to complete. It's Marcus Lucas again. We saw some great pressure by DeMontre Moore. We haven't really, haven't really mentioned his name much tonight. And, and the great pressure. I wonder if he jumped. Got all sides on the defense. That penalty's declined. First down. <laughs> that that'll tend to do it. Too, the pressure yeah. was too great. <laughs> but you're starting to see Burke Stresser can throw a fastball. I mean, they, they were telling us about how good his arm was. You look at him on film and you can tell, but live, this guy can really put some heat on it. He was a lifelong Mizzou fan. He committed June of 09. He committed way early, didn't even take any real other offers. Wanted to be a Tiger. And here he is, handing off to Kendall Lawrence. And for some of these seniors, like Kendall Lawrence, you know, this was their last chance to get bowl eligible. This is it. Going to turn off the college football lights for these senior Tigers. And a wonderful year for Kendall Lawrence as we're getting close to the fourth quarter here. But uh, a good year picking up the slack. They were expecting to have Henry Josie and maybe two running back combination, but it's been all about Lawrence this season. As for tonight, it's been all about who else but Johnny Manziel. We'll go to the fourth quarter and we'll do so with the Aggies up 52 to 16 over the Tigers. This note was waiting for me in the broadcast booth that said, for our first-time visitors, please do not be alarmed as the press box will move during the Aggie War hymn. So, actually, Ed, you gave me the heads up earlier <laughs> yeah. this week. Appreciated that. And it moves enough that it is scary for those of us who don't like heights. So you're saying we're, hi you're saying we're high up? Yes, we are. And steep, mm -hmm. too. Second down and 11. See if Missouri can make this a little more respectable. And an excellent rush there by Kendall Lawrence, who's getting better as this game goes along. Nice job on the backside by Evan Bame. I'm starting to see why they like this offensive lineman, Bame. That was just a wonderful job maintaining contact. He was the backside guard, maintained contact the whole way so that Lawrence could cut behind him. This, this guy does look like he's going to be the real deal. Uh, guys hurt, guys playing out of position. The offensive line has been a mess all season long, but again, trying to make it a little more respectable so when you wake up and you see the box score in the newspaper tomorrow, brought down by Lauren. Lawrence brought down at the one-yard line. By the way, kids, a newspaper is... Go out and buy a newspaper <laughs> once in a while, people. Come on, help those people out. I'm still an everyday subscriber. Love the feel of the newspaper yeah. with your morning coffee. Second down and goal now. Eighth play of the drive. And there's a little bit of confusion right now for Missouri. Not sure if they're not going to need a timeout here. I'm still not sure they know what they've got going on. There they go. That's Green Beckham, bottom of your screen. And Burkstress will try to fight his way into the end zone, and he's in. Corbin Burkstresser for the touchdown. Now Missouri did a nice job. They had five receivers in the game, no running backs. They brought Mo in motion. And so the defense is thinking there's no way they're going to run this. Ooh, that was close, but uh, it did look like Burkstresser flipped over there at the end and you know this second half Burkstresser's gotten it going with his feet a little bit that was something that was missing there in the first half and Baggett will put it through 52 23 try that score on for size early in the fourth quarter awards will be handed out oh by the way December 6th just happens to be Johnny Mansell's 20th birthday of course it is right why wouldn't it be hard to believe this young man's 19 years old walked onto the stage against Florida you know had a little tough time there in the second half reverted to some of his high school ball but once he's gotten settled down he look, been looking like a veteran more and more every week and it is interesting if he'll come back out again you'd think they'd like to get him out of the game but he throws the pick Score tightens it to only a 29 point margin. Yeah. And there's Manziel coming on the field as we send it back to Wendy Nicks.
Steve, thank you very much. And we go back to Los Angeles, USC, Notre Dame, six-point ball game. But here's Manti Teow. Wow. Now second in the FBS with seven interceptions. Irish lead by six in the third quarter. And South Carolina Clemson, a three-point ball game with the Gamecocks out front, 8.54 to play on ESPN. Three-point ball game. What's that? 29 is the lead for the Aggies here as we're a couple of minutes into quarter number four. Manti Teo making things interesting for the Heisman race. But I'm, uh, I'm I'm quite shocked that Manziel is still playing here in the fourth quarter. I just think you're playing with fire. Why why even risk any type of injury, even if you're just going to hand it off the rest of the game? Trey Williams, the ball carrier that time, and especially on a night in which Manziel's already been injured and down, hurting his left knee, missing a series. And I know he's a competitive guy and he wants to go back in the field, but sometimes it's up to the coaches to make these types of choices. And in a game that you're up this many points in the fourth quarter, I just I'm just worry about a young man taking unnecessary hits. And he's a guy who plays recklessly. That's his M.O. Manziel on the move and throwing on the run. Able to hit Mike Evans and he's forced out of bounds. Donovan Bonner on the coverage and and even going further at some point you got to start getting your second and third string guys in not just because you're up this much but those guys need work too you need to start developing some depth within your program and this just feels like the ability to do that against a conference opponent that yeah they haven't played well today but it's still good competition keeps it on the ground and that's a good play at this point of the game Trey Williams with Johnny Manziel, you wonder what else he can do. Earlier, they tried to throw to him, throw to him a touchdown pass. A week ago, the game was at it. He's on to kick the extra point. Are you kidding me? And the problem here is he goes for the straight on kick. You have to have a square toe. Do you not remember Mark Mosley? Absolutely. The shoe? You can't kick with a rounded toe if you're going to kick straight. Manziel airing it out there and could not hook up with Wachaku. And there is a flag on the play. Offsides on the defense, number 57. First down. No, well, things just not going well for Missouri. But here was, uh, we saw the extra point, and then this was a Heisman call by Cliff Kingsbury. Ball thrown just a little bit, bit late, but EJ Gaines, one of the only bright spots for Missouri today. Gaines breaks it up and then of course had the interception on the drive uh, before this one. Kingsbury knows something about the Heisman Trophy. Finished ninth in the voting his year, the year Carson Palmer took home the trophy. Manziel on the run as usual and got a target down at the one-yard line. It's Kenrick McNeil. 32 on the game. Looks like a baseball player. Picking up a ball, running across it, and he was a sensational. Johnny Menzel was a sensational baseball player in high school, but he has that ability to, to get velocity on a ball while he's on the run very well. Speaking of the run, he's trying to run that one in. There's your second, there's your third effort. Reached across. There's the signal touchdown. Are you kidding me? That play was stopped. And then it wasn't, and Manziel reaches across for a one-yard touchdown. Make it five total, three passing, two running for Johnny Football tonight. Play's not over. Now you may have been able to call that his forward momentum was stopped, but they're typically going to let this go if... Uh, the scrum is moving and it was moving you know that from that shot from that blim shot you could see he was still making full progress actually. and the extra point is good now maybe that's the exclamation that's got point. It. come on <laughs> enough at 59 23 Let's bring your ids if you're 21 or over it's miller time Steve Levy with Ed Cunningham and Kaylee Hartung and our excellent crew working the Thanksgiving holiday weekend and all watching the Johnny Manziel show. And uh, he decides after the throw <laughs> to throw in the towel. Although he then had to sneak the ball in and now has put on the visor. So I think he had he 
figuratively threw in the towel. Now I think literally he has thrown in the towel. The visor is the clear cut sign. But but he is so good that after throwing a strike to get it down to the one, <laughs> he decided to throw a towel in celebration. We. Kick it off from the 35 at 59 23. And back for just waiting to break one is Marcus Murphy. He's had some running room tonight, has shown, shown some flashes. A four yards deep in the end zone. Murphy will look to run it out, and not this time. He's drilled down at the 14. Johnny Football, the legend, the name itself. Now you think about some famous nicknames in sports. In football, there's always Broadway Joe. Teddy that, ball game in baseball. That's a pretty great one. Teddy ball game's hard hard to beat. I love Pistol Pete. Did Pistol actually have that on the back of his jersey? I do not recall that. That Photoshop. And there's only one Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe. But I will say, Johnny Football. Yeah. Just, you said it today in our production meeting. Right. How has that never <laughs> been used before? It's almost too perfect. It's so obvious, yet it's so simple, which, which makes it beautiful. Harry Hoops, is there a Harry Hoops out there? Well, and the, the funny part about the nickname, it did, you'd think something like that would have come out of high school. You, but he was so good right. in basketball and baseball, there, there was no real specialty. So the nickname obviously started this year. And uh, I'm sure there are some legends and some folklore out there and probably three or four people claiming they started, but no one's mm -hmm. ever been able to really pin down its origin. Burke Stresser on second and ten. From the five throwing, there is a flag on the play. Flag out at the 21-yard line as he completes with Marcus Lucas. We'll see what the laundry's all about. The only thing I will say about that nickname, though, is if he gave it to himself, we have to just get rid of it. Right. You, you cannot, can't do that. Yeah, no self-anointed nicknames. Offsides. Number 94, defense, five yards, previous spot, replay, second down. And this being America, of course, people are going to try to make money off Johnny Football down to Kaylee. Steve, that's right. The main concern of the Manziel family and of A&M is not so much profitability, but protecting his eligibility. The NCAA rules clearly state that a player's name or his likeness cannot be used to sell merchandise. After this play, I'll tell you what the family's doing to protect him. Ed, I know you had a clever nickname. What was it? Come on, give it a name. Come on, you had something great, didn't you? They don't give uh, nicknames to centers. Completed. Out to TJ Mode. Back down to Kaylee. Thanks, Steve. I spoke with ESPN's own Darren Ravel earlier today, and he explained to me that the school has an obligation that if unauthorized merchandise is out there in the marketplace, they have to notify the NCAA. Now, A&M tells me that the Aggies, this fan base, they police their own mark, and once the school is aware of bootleg items out there like T-shirts and action figures, they notify the NCAA. They also notify the Manziel family attorneys. Burke Stresser under some stress now. Hit and complete to Lucas again for the short game. Kaylee, any more there? Absolutely, Steve. It's a long story. Oh, we keep, got here. Keep it going. We, we have the time. <laughs> we certainly do. So as the Manziel family now seeks to trademark this Johnny football name, they need to be aware of these bootleg items out in the marketplace. And the problem is, is that since they don't want to put the name and use it in commerce because they can't, it makes getting that trademark right even the more difficult for them. This is something that could take six months to a year and a half for them to legally have the right to. Kaylee, thank you. I know LSU tried to do something similar with uh, Tyron Matthew and the Honey Badger last year. And again, it's so simplistic, right? Any, uh, anybody yeah. can say they came up with it. I know. Hey, it's so clever. It's Johnny Football. What a great idea. Uh, you know, at some point, someone has to go do a research progress, uh, uh, a research paper that says, here is where the nickname came from. We have to, we have to have an origin story. So there are no Ed Cunningham action figures out there that we know of. people are making money off your name. <laughs> A nickel apiece, <laughs> maybe? Sorry about the apple cup, by the way. <laughs> Burke Stresser able to get out of that. On the run to his right, he sees trouble ahead, throws. Sort of had two targets there. And neither one wound up catching the football. Washington was there, and Lawrence as well.
Missouri will punt. Think they got another fake in them? No. I think they're just playing this like it's 0 0 and just trying to make some improvement and get on the bus and head home. Arrow belts in and Dustin Harris, so let it roll. A rare Missouri break takes a good bounce from Mizzou. It'll be down at the four yard line. All that's left to be determined really tonight. Will Johnny Manziel speak tonight? Of course, Notre Dame is in. The Alabama Georgia winner is in. But Notre Dame's in if they win. It's unbelievable, though. Florida sitting there at 10 and 1. If Notre Dame falls, and remember, Oregon. With UCLA beating Stanford or Stanford beating UCLA, Oregon's not going to get a chance in the Pac-12 championship to make a statement. So Florida's sitting there looking pretty good if Notre Dame goes down. That's the old visor trick. We've seen it once, you've seen it a million times. You put on the visor and you think you're done, and then you put your helmet back on. And maybe they were going for the show. Manzel just handed off. And now he will run off the field. The glorious applause and a standing ovation by the 87,222 in attendance, the eighth best crowd in Kyle Field history. And a well deserved round of applause. Kind of a nice touch. Was nice. Handoff to Trey Williams. And Williams taken down shy of the 10 yard line. Real quick, who was the starting quarterback for Texas A&M last year? Isn't that amazing? You have to think about a first-round draft pick. Ryan Tannehill. Who was a starter in the NFL right, right. because Eighth of the overall. magic of this yeah. man. That's right. We all forget right. that there was an NFL quarterback here last year. That's a great point. Nice career for Ryan Swope, the senior. Gets an ovation as well. Jamil Showers. This is his second stint in the game, and he was crushed there and fumbled the ball out of bounds. Again, when, when Manziel left, when he had hurt his left knee, it was Showers who came in to replace him for that series. It's quite amazing. And, you know, give Mike Sherman a lot of credit in this deal. His staff, who was let go after a 6-6, six and six, or ended up being a 7-6 and six season after a win in the bowl game last year. But they were let go, but they recruited Manziel and a lot of the players that here. And, and give them a lot of credit because this was an offense that was seventh in the country last year. So when Kevin Sumlin came in and Cliff Kingsbury, they took over an offense that not only had players, but the guys had been coached very well. And what's this? This is a Ryan Epperson punt. The Aggies punting for the first time all game. Marcus Murphy on the return there. And a punt of 37. By Epperson, who must have been tough staying loose for him on the sideline, return of 25 for Murphy. Now let's take a look at our FaceTime profile, which is brought to you by Edward Jones. Kevin Sumlin, who uh, was the offensive coordinator here when Texas A&M beat number one Oklahoma in this building in 2002. And uh, it's that guy, Mike Price, right there that I think changed the course of Kevin Sumlin's career when. Kevin was a former linebacker from Purdue as a graduate assistant at Washington State under Price. Price asked someone to coach the junior varsity team and he said but I want you to learn our offense. It's a it's a new offense. It's the new wave the spread offense and it changed the course of his life. He went from a defensive coach to an offensive coach and he's never looked back. There is an Aggie down on the field. And that looks like uh, Stephen Terrell, the free safety who was on the punt coverage. But as the Missouri players started coming back to set up the block, Terrell was hit extremely hard. He's a senior as well. All right, the scoring from Johnny Manziel with the arm, with his own legs. He's okay. You, you watch that play, and you if you have one of those every four or five games, it'd be amazing. I think he's had three or four of these exactly like this in this ball game alone. Of course, we saw the unbelievable play against Alabama where he fumbled the ball momentarily and then threw a touchdown. But uh, this guy is uh, awfully fun to watch. 
AM came in averaging some 44 points per game. That's sixth in the NCAA. And now Missouri looking to add to their total tonight. Touchdown. That's Doriel Green Beckham who leaped up high, and he can do that at 6'6. Again, to make the score much more respectable. Good throw by Burke Stresser, too. It's a hard throw. You've got to keep it just far enough in bounds where your guy can make the catch, but if you throw it too far to the inside, this can be an interception. And that ball was put right there. Side judge right on the spot to see that the foot was indeed in bounds. And that's blocked on the extra point. And that'll be the end of that. So the extra point has been an issue for Missouri, pretty much like everything else. Keeps it at a 30-point a bulge, if you will. 59-29, 7-15 left. And now we believe Manziel is done for the night. Boat is going to be close for the Heisman. I don't think Manziel is going to run away with it. But after watching him here tonight, and I don't reveal who I vote yep. for. It's kind of an unwritten rule amongst voters not to do that. But I, I've got to think this guy's the front runner. Well, if he was the front runner coming in, he is certainly added to that tonight. You would think that kick is out of the end zone. And we send it back to Wendy Nix. Steve, thank you. It is almost official in South Carolina. The Gamecocks facing the Clemson Tigers. Dylan Thompson to Bruce Ellington, a six-yard TD pass. And the South Carolina seniors will go 4-0 against their cross-state rivals. 27-17 likely to be the final. And in Notre Dame USC, here's Everett Golson to Tyler Eifert. That puts the Irish in field goal range. They've kicked another. It's now 19-10 Notre Dame on ABC. All right, Wendy, thank you. Keeping an eye on that. Oh, big hit. Jameel Showers took a big hit and then stays on his feet. And did he drop the football? Yeah, it looked like he may have fumbled. You could hear that hit from way up here, and we are way up. Well, and the, and the hard part for the backup quarterback is he gets the backup offensive line. That 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 protection fell apart very quickly, and not quite the uh, same protection afforded uh, the first string. Second down and 18. Mm -hmm. Here's Showers trying to do his best Manziel impression, and he's taken down by Sheldon Richardson. Again, still waiting to hear the first public words out of Johnny Manziel. We asked Coach Sumlin, well, since we haven't heard from him ourselves, what kind of guy is he? What's he like? He's a very confident young man, but he's 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 really 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 a humble person, uh, one that his teammates like to be around. Uh, very charismatic. I think you can see the energy level that he plays with, and uh, it's contagious. On third and 21, Showers able to complete. Hits Daryl Walker there, well shy of the first down, and we'll see consecutive punts. On consecutive possessions, the first, the first of the game for the Aggies. Fourth down, number 48. Still coaching him up on the sideline, <laughs> yeah, huh? Exactly. At 59-29. Ryan Apersina is standing at his two. And a fair catch is called for yeah, at the 45-yard line. And that's where Mizzou will take over. 59-29, a 30-point advantage for AM. and m And they've pretty much done everything you would expect it to see out of them. And Manziel gave you the wow factor as well. So pretty much as advertised for this game going in. The, the one thing that surprised me, though, and like I said, I've seen Man a lot of Manziel this year, just not an entire game where I could dedicate watching every play. What's been really impressive to me is how accurate a thrower he is over the course of an entire game. I knew he could make the special plays, but just the plays where he has to just complete an eight yard pass to pick up a first down. Burke Stresser able to hook up 
with TJ Moe for the first down there and move the change. The speed is deceptive for Manziel. We've heard all season long coaches preach to their kids, the opponents of A&M. He's faster than he looks on film. They don't believe him until they get on the field, and then they find out. I think the part that throws you off is how just elusive he is and how naturally he makes those moves to make you miss. It just It's so hard to emulate that in practice getting ready to play him. Marcus Murphy gets a carry there. Under five minutes to play now here in the fourth inning. You know, for all you've said about him, Ed, and his accuracy of his throw, we know he could run the football. What, I mean, how much can he improve? Well, that's the scary part, and I think that this offense, and I think what Cliff Kingsbury brought here, of course, it's that Texas Tech Mike Leach system that he brought with him through the Houston system into now. I think they're going to be able to invent, invent stuff for this guy and make him better along the way. And, it, you know, it might be incremental improvement, but how much better does the guy need to get, you know? But I, there are some things that they want to work on with him. They, they'd love to work a little more on the vertical passing game. They're trying to find more and more ways to get him to run the ball. But the biggest thing that they want to see improvement from from him is the pre-snap decision-making so that before the snap, he has a plan with the play called and the defense what may work. They still want him to go off script, but it was more often off script than on script this year just because of his first year in the system first year as a starting quarterback and then that will improve third down and one for Mizzou ball spotted at the 31 and they'll hand it off to Kendall Lawrence he's got the first down Manziel is scheduled to speak publicly for the first time on Monday by teleconference so you don't actually get to, you know, really talk to him. Then Tuesday, <laughs> you really get to talk to him. Full-blown news conference. And, and if you just can't wait, just go on YouTube and look at some of his high school <laughs> interviews. There are a few running around out there. And if it's just killing you. There's the outside chance. Kaylee might be able to sweet talk her way and talk to Johnny Manziel after this game, which has three and a half minutes left. But don't you think, Steve, yeah. that not to, him not talking has been part of the allure? Honestly, Absolutely. the nickname, yes. who is the this mystery. guy? Absolutely. There's yeah. no question. Uh, I talked earlier this week to Trent Dilfer. Now, this is ways away, ways down the road. But if you wanted to project out Manziel, NFL, the bottom line from Trent, who looks at as much NFL quarterback film as anybody out there, he said, overall, somebody has to have a unique trait. About 5% of all quarterbacks in the NFL do. And he said a good coach or system will allow him to be successful. And he said Manziel clearly has that unique trait. Well, and that trait is that when when plays break down, I, I think he's a good enough quarterback to stand in the pocket and, and, and deliver the ball and play in a more professional type of offense. But his trait is when he's on the run, his ability not just to make people miss, but then to get his shoulders turned, throw a ball accurately and with velocity. It's a he's rare in that way. There's very few guys who do it as well as this guy does. Third down and seven upcoming. Hand off and a good hole there for Marcus Murphy. And he's got enough for the first down. And while they're doing some nice things here in the second half, Missouri, a disappointing season will come to an end. Again, they had a school record seven consecutive bowl appearances. That'll fall by the wayside here. And you look at all of the injuries they've had on offense, especially James Franklin, the quarterback. They had six games go down to the final drive this year and be, you know you could say with those injuries they end up going three and three I, if they don't have those injuries maybe they're five and one in those games and you're having a whole different conversation right now about the end of the season for them well Brooks Russell was hit as he threw and that ball is intercepted picked off by Floyd Raven senior Howard Matthews got the pressure on Burke Stresser, and that allowed Raven to make the interception. Now, if you're wondering why Burke Stresser is still in the game, we've been talking about Manziel being out as the starter. There is no real backup, so unfortunately for Burke Stresser, he's got to take all of this pounding with James Franklin out. Matty Mock is a true freshman that has not played at all for Missouri, so there's no way they're going to burn his red shirt in this game. So unfortunately for Burke Stresser, having to finish this out and that opens you up to big hits like that. 
And Missouri, you know, again, th this was their chance to be bowl eligible, but they really had it last week. Sir they allowed Syracuse to score 21 points in the fourth quarter. Okay. That was the game Missouri had at home. Big lead early. Get bowl eligible. It was unlikely they were going to come in here and yeah. win anyway. Had to get it done last week and didn't. And you know, your offseason could go one of two ways after the end of a season like this. And what, what Gary Pinkle has to be, and Gary Pinkle does a very good job. He has a leadership council that he leans on. But you have got to be very careful and very early in the offseason stress to these guys. That was an aberration. We're getting some guys back. Some guys are going to be healthy. And just make sure that there is the focus going into the offseason because it has. It's been very frustrating for Missouri. And I'm sure it's taken a lot of work from the leaders on the team and the coaches to not let some finger pointing go on. But they're realistic guys. They understand when you lose the guys that Missouri has lost along the way especially in this league in the SEC now and just the margin for error is just not there and again in the woulda shoulda coulda department Missouri lost at Florida at the swamp they lost 14 to 7 and Mizzou statistically had the Gators beaten just about every category and still came up short in another game one of those games they could have won as you look at the SEC standings up to the second and you see how the two new kids on the block did so you want to play with the big boys A&M said absolutely bring it on and yeah. hasn't gone as well for Missouri and I think if you looked at Missouri and A&M as programs and said which one is set up for more long term success in the SEC clearly it's Texas A&M Missouri has done a really nice job I just think that there are some things inherently in being in a state like Missouri where there's just not as many high school players that are that are coming out that are big time guys. I mean Gary Pinkle's getting a lot of them. But when you look at right down the road is the city of time Houston. Out. Time out. Offense. What they, I, I know you can't take the timeouts with you Ed, but <laughs> at 59 yeah. 29 what are we doing with 70 seconds uh, left here. I'm not sure. But if you look at A&M and you look at programs and what makes long term success in football happen. Number one you have to have a fan base that really cares and is large in number. Check. Check. You have to have people that are willing to donate to the program when you need to upgrade your facilities and do those types of things. Check. We hear that's coming with Kyle Field, you, too. You need to be in an area uh, of the country that takes high school football very seriously. Check. 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 Then you have to, and, and this is, you go back and you look at the history of these big programs, you draw a circle around the campus that are two gas tank drives away. And say how many of those kids are, are going to be good enough to play football well, when you do that around Texas A&M you land in a bunch of big city centers including Houston and Houston can put as many as three to four hundred kids per year into college football Houston's roughly 90 miles away so that's less than a one gas tank you talk about Murphy trying to make the return something happened there is a flag on the play as Murphy got it out to a 45 yard line Talked about the many traditions they enjoy, which includes the midnight yell. You know what time that takes place? 11:59. Uh, right around midnight. And it was great to be a part of it and take it all in last night. We need you to show Missouri what the 12th man is all about at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. There are pep rallies, and there are pep rallies. And if you look closely, you can see Kaylee in there somewhere. And I, I know I, I'm looking for Ed. Hang on, let me no. see, I see Ed. No, I was in bed. No. Your feetsy pajamas probably. <laughs> like Kaylee and I were out working past midnight last night here in the home of the 12th man. Well, and they didn't need much of the 12th man today. This was, uh, this could have been done in a parking lot. Again, one of the many cool Locking traditions the they have here. Against the return team during the return. Penalties 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Headset has come off. Giggum indeed. 54 seconds left in this one. Has Johnny Manziel cemented his Heisman Trophy here tonight? Find out in a few weeks. Not that far away. No. When do you need your voting by? Five o'clock next Monday, a week from Monday. All right. East Coast time. December 6th, the Home Depot Awards on ESPN. It's 
Johnny's 20th birthday and two days later he'll announce the Heisman Trophy winner. You got a lean for me? I know you yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't put you in that spot. I understand. I, I'll tell you my, my three are Teo. Yep. Marquise was there you go. Of course. And well deserved. What a wonderful first year for Kevin Sumlin. I, I got to know Kevin while he was at Oklahoma and covered him while I was at Houston. He, he good man, good head coach. You know, I, I know they lost two games, but really could not have gotten any better this season. No. Really couldn't have. And you come in and, and Kevin Sumlin and his staff did a wonderful job of being sensitive to the fact that they were taking over a program that these players were not their young men. And I think the smartest thing he did was backing up spring practice eight weeks. Gave them time to get to know the players because when you coach people hard, they have to know they can trust you. And Kevin Sumlin and his staff wanted the players to know that they cared about them more than just on the field before they went out and really put their thumb on them on the football field. I think that was a really smart move. Sumlin said, you know, with this being senior night, he said the quote is, hey, they didn't sign up for me, these guys. No. They didn't sign up for me. New staff, new schemes. But they also said the buy-in is a lot easier when you have quick success. And, yeah. and they did. Well, and there were some prior relationships. Remember, someone in this staff, most, some of this staff were at Houston. They recruited a lot of these players, went after them thinking maybe they won't, maybe AM will back off them, we can right. get them to Houston. So they had already had personal relationships with a lot of these guys, and that really helped. The night for Johnny Manziel, 439, already smashed Cam Newton's SEC offensive single season yards record and made it that much tougher for the next guy who's going to try to come after his mark, which might be that guy <laughs> next year. Come next year. Handshakes and hugs at the center of the field. It's all good for AM tonight, the ninth ranked Aggies. Put a hurting on Mizzou 59 29. Johnny Football accounts for five touchdowns tonight. Final score AM 59, Missouri 29. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Ed and Kaylee, thanks for letting me hang around for some college football tonight. I'm Steve Levy. We head back to the studio. Wendy Nix standing by with the college football scoreboard. Wendy, take it away.